ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Donna Just Being Real. My channel is all about dating, love, relationship, toxic relationship advice channel. And we're back again with Ham Hawk. Ham Hawk face, yes. Mm -hmm. Don't he look just like a Ham Hawk? Look, look at this picture. This is not comparison to a Ham Hawk. He looks just like it. All right, so we're going to get back into this trial. If anybody's like a little bit lost about this trial, please read the description. You can find out about it, okay? And I did pass commentary on this trial. Now, the past commentary I did, I did with the girlfriend when she was on the stand. Okay, and thank you for the people that watch that video and leaving me feedback. I will respond to your feedback because there's a lot of feedback and I'm loving it because I'm getting to see different people's insight of the whole thing. So I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Then I also did commentary on the son. Now, this is his son that he has with the mother. Right. I did commentary with him when he was on the stand. Now I did the mama and grandma did commentary too when they was on the stand. All right, so this beautiful young lady, look at her, just as beautiful as she be. These are my thoughts and opinions. I feel she was not put first as a child, and she was not protected as a child. And if these two things would have happened in her life, this girl would be alive right now. We should not even be discussing this. This should have never happened. All right, so first I'm going to show you a little news clip, and then after news clip, we're going to get into a couple other things. So we're going to be watching trial clips. We're going to watch the body cam. We're going to watch the officer first. We're going to watch the officer when he was on the stand, and he was talking about, you know, when he first went to go and see him, and was like, this man is acting, you know, a little crazy, but whatever. So you get to watch that. Then we're going to also see a couple of other clips of when he was going to Walmart buying the bleach and all this kind of stuff. So we're just going to get into clips, clips, clips. All right, so everybody make sure you hit the like button. Share me out on your social media. If you need to reach out to me, feel free to look in the description. You can find my email address. If you have a viewer's request or if you need a coaching and dating love relationships, toxic relationship, feel free to contact me. All right, so basically I'm just showing clips. I kind of really focus when I do these trials, I focus more on that relationship aspect because my channel is all about dating smart, not thirsty. And I see a lot of mistakes in here in the dating. Oh, yes, I see a whole lot, okay? And you tell me what mistakes you see. All right, so like I said, hit the like. And the people that's watching replay, make sure you hit the like and share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Let's get into this first clip, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to this one. developments in the upcoming murder trial against Henry Dinkins, the man accused of killing Briaja Terrell. Scott County prosecutors want the court to admit evidence they say could point to a motive. Evidence prosecutors say shows Dinkins searched for child pornography around the time the girl disappeared. That is tonight's top story. You hear this low life? Ooh, he should have never been born. He should have never been born. Resume. The 50-year-old is charged with first-degree murder and kidnapping. More than 100 witnesses are on the list to testify in his trial next month in Lynn County. Court records indicate the evidence prosecutors want to introduce, say, Riaja and her brother spent the night at Henry Dinkins' apartment July 9th of 2020, and that Dinkins' girlfriend at the time said there was no sign of Dinkins or Briaja Terrell very early the next morning. Court documents indicate the girlfriend says Dinkins came home after sunrise without the girl. Briaja's brother told officers he and his father went to Walmart to buy Clorox. Investigators say Dinkins' phone pinged at a Walmart in Clinton early on July 10th. Court records also say the evidence prosecutors want admitted is that Dinkins searched pornographic websites for material involving the sexual abuse of young black girls in the 10 days before Briasia Terrell disappeared. Henry Dinkins and his family maintain his innocence. We go into much greater detail about the story online at ourquadcities.com. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of that? If that ain't enough proof, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. All right, so listen to the music, enjoy the music while you wait, while I get ready. Switch over to the next clip, okay, ladies and gentlemen? So enjoy the music. Okay, we got another clip. Now, let 
turn down the music so okay all right now in this clip we're gonna get into this is a clip now this is the clip of the officer right and i'm so glad i found it. i found it today i was so glad i found it now this officer was on the stand now this is the officer in the body cam because the body cam we never saw the officer you know what i mean but i felt so sorry for the officer because i mean he's doing the best he can and he got he got he got ham hock i don't know my number i don't know my address then a mother, she walk off and throw her hands up in the air. I've never seen nothing like this in my life. But you share your thoughts and let me know what you think. All right, I'm going to greet people in here. If I'm not really greeting, it's not that I'm being rude. Mods, if you're here, if you're able to greet everybody, it's just that I want to get through everything, okay? And this speed is going to be on 1.25. If it's too fast for you, ladies and gentlemen, you can always hit the settings and you can slow the speed. It's up to you. Whatever's comfortable for you, you can do. I just appreciate you being here and hitting the like. All right, let's see what this officer has to say. And then right after this, it's going to get right into the body cam. Okay, so that's what we're focusing on right now, ladies and gentlemen. Justice for Bree. This shouldn't have never happened to you. This man should have never been born. You should have never been the president's man at all. Okay, let's get into what the officer has to say. Proceed, Ms. Kington. Thank you, Your Honor. Please state your name for the record. Officer Craig Burkle. What is your occupation? I'm a police officer with the city of Davenport. How long have you been employed for the Davenport Police Department? 22 years. Okay. Describe your prior educational background. I uh, graduated from college. After going to college, I got hired with the police department. And then we went to the police academy. And then we come through uh, field training phase. Okay. And then over the course of your um, career, um, have you um, uh, gone through just extensive training in a number of different areas? Yeah, we always have uh, schooling, continuing education, uh, getting trained through other officers in different areas. Okay. What I'd like to talk with you about is the nature of your assignment with the department back in July of 2020. Um, what was the nature of your assignment at that time? At that time, I was assigned to the patrol division. Okay. What shift were you working? First. Were you on duty on July 10th of 2020? Yes. What hours are entailed within the first shift? Uh, approximately 6.45 a.m. to 3.15 p.m. Did you respond to a dispatch that came out at 8.42 a.m.? Yes. And what was the nature of the dispatch? Uh, I responded to a, a call of a missing child. Okay. What address were you sent to? 2744 East 53rd Street, apartment 8. Could you describe um, the um, location that you went to? Uh, it's off 53rd Street. Um, as you get towards the east side of town, um, then you take uh, you go north into the parking lot, and there's several apartment buildings up there. What's the name of this particular complex? I don't know the exact name of the complex. Okay, and I'll just ask you, does Jersey Meadows sound familiar? Yes. All right. Now, 53rd runs what directions? East, west. Um, and then which side of 53rd is the Jersey Meadow apartment complex located on? North side. Okay. When you went to that location, um, um, were you to meet with anyone there, or you, were you simply sent out to that address? Uh, the defendant, Mr. Dinkins, called, and he was reporting uh, that when he woke up this morning, there was a missing child. And actually, what I want to do is I want to go back to your investigative report. Do you have that right there before you? Yes. All right. Um, uh, in the information that you received, did you believe that Henry Dinkins was the subject that called in, or that it was actually Aisha Langford, the mother who had um, called, that the child was missing? Uh, Mr. Dinkins. That's the information that was given to you? Yes. Did you know if that was correct or not? No, to okay. this day I still believe that it was him. All right. So then um, as far as just a child being reported missing, what additional information was provided about that child? Um, when I was dispatched, uh, they didn't have a clothing, clothing description yet, and uh, there is very vague information. I, I had to meet with the complainant. Okay. Officer Burkle, um, let me ask you about this. Um, uh, when you were going out um, on this call, um, did you have any information about Aisha Langford, the mother, having initially called 911 and then being directed to the general number um, over the Davenport Police Department? No, I didn't know Aisha was going to be there until I pulled in the parking lot. Certainly. And then did you have any information that Aisha Langford actually um, had communicated with um, communication specialist Mona Borelli at the Davenport Police Department to provide details about her child missing and how she had found out about that? I did not. Okay. All right. So then when you pulled into the complex itself, were there any involved parties that were there and initiated contact um, with you as you arrived? Yes. Who was that? Aisha and uh, her son. All right. Um, describe what happened when you arrived there in the parking lot. Uh, she was sitting in her car waiting for me, and uh, as I got out of my car, uh, she approached me, okay. and she said that her ch child was missing. 
Uh, what type of vehicle were you operating? Uh, uh, marked squad car. And then how were you dressed that day? In police blue uniform. Okay. And so by virtue of that, would you clearly be recognized as a law enforcement member? Yes. Officer Burkle, um, uh, could you describe for us the type of equipment um, that you have attached to your uniform that you wear each day as you go out and perform your duties? Uh, other, we have a body camera that is attached to us that records everything we do and say. Okay. Where is that body camera affixed to? Uh, center chest. And were you wearing your body-worn camera that day? Yes. Um, would the contact that you would have had with involved parties there at the Jersey Meadows apartment complex have been captured and documented on that body-worn camera? Yes. All right. Now, let's just go ahead and step outside the storyline for the time being. But let's talk about um, how that footage then is preserved. Um, explain the process. So as you go about your duties, is that body-worn camera activated during any contact that you have um, with members of the public when you go on a call? Yes. Okay. Nurse Chocolate, and thank you for the blessing to the channel. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I've seen your comment on the other videos. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for watching the videos. And I see you, Mod on Dead, Angel, Angel, Angel. And make sure, everybody, you make sure you hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. Thank you again. Thank you again. Be soon. All right, recap. Just in case anybody's coming here. This is the officer we did not see in the body cam. So he's telling what happened that day. And right after this, I'm going to show the body cam. Yes, I've showed it a few times, but I, I just can't get over how they was acting. Uh, especially the mother. All right, let's get back to it. What is done with the footage that's captured through that body-worn camera at the end of your shift? At the end of the shift, we, uh, we save it for uh, determining what the call is we we determine the length that we want saved for okay. every call depending upon how it's uh, classified is uh, preserved for a certain amount of time okay so there's a retention period that you can select for that footage to be saved as evidence correct all right um, and then when you return to the department um, is that footage downloaded into some type of system yes explain uh, uh, when we plug in our camera at the end of the day to charge it up uh, there's uh, charging stations that automatically download all the videos that we took from the day and those videos are saved. Okay. Um, and then are those accessible um, as an item of evidence um, when there has been a formal prosecution that is filed um, and there is the need to be able to view um, and utilize that evidence in the course of a prosecution? Yes. Would that um, procedure have been followed in this particular instance? Yes. Okay. Now, going back um, uh, to um, your arrival there at the department, when you got out of your patrol vehicle, was Aisha Langford the first person to make contact with you? Yes. Did you see anyone else there in the apartment complex at that time, or I should say the parking lot um, of the complex at that time, other than Aisha Langford? Not at that immediate time. Okay. Um, uh, describe what happened when that contact occurred between the two of you. Between Aisha and I? Yeah. Uh, she approached me, and uh, you could tell that she was uh, kind of shooken. Um, she was concerned her daughter was missing, and that's what she said. Uh, shortly after that, Henry uh, came out from inside the building, okay. and he approached me. All right. Um, uh, did Miss um, Langford indicate to you how she um, had learned that her daughter was missing? Yes. And what did she share with you? Uh, she said that Henry called her this okay. morning. Um, who was the child identified as? Briasia Terrell. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. Now... Um, when Mr. Um, he, um, Dinkins came out of the apartment building, did he approach you? Yes. Okay. Um, in that approach, um, did he describe for you what relationship he had to this particular apartment complex? Not at that time. Uh, eventually learned that he was living there with his girlfriend of six years. Okay. And then who was his girlfriend? Her name is Andrea Culberson. Did you at some point during contact identify what apartment Mr. Dinkins had been living at with Andrea Culberson? Yes. All right. Um, so with Aisha indicating that she'd learned from Mr. Dinkins, Riasia was missing, did you turn your focus to Mr. Dinkins? Yes. How would you describe um, his emotional comportment? Uh, he didn't seem very concerned. He seemed very relaxed. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary for me going to an another call. Okay. All right. And let's just talk about this. Um, with your um, uh, um, uh, tenure at the Davenport Police Department, over the course of your career, as an officer, have you responded to a number of calls um, where either parents um, or individuals who are tasked with supervising children have called in and reported um, a child missing? Yes. Just tell us about what that experience typically looks like. Uh, based on my experience over my career, um, there, there's a good amount of time that we go to it. Uh, the child's just hiding inside the house. Um, 
So sometimes we find them inside the house and sometimes they're a runaway and sometimes they become a missing person. But it's our job to look into this and try to determine um, which way we're looking at. Okay. Um, normally, if there's a child reported missing, is that child found fairly quickly? Um, determine what's quickly. Okay. And, and that is a relative term. Yeah. All right. So just give us a sense of your own perspective. A parent calls, says, I can't find my child. 50% uh, of the time, we'll find them pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, the other 50% of the time, you know, they may be a runaway for uh, a few days, a few weeks, and sometimes they become a missing person. Okay. In your career, though, how many investigations have you ever been involved in here in the Scott County area where there was a child reporting missing that was never found? None. All right. Now, that being said, describe what developed during your contact with Mr. Dinkins. Um, we started off a conversation. It was very casual. Uh, he said that uh, Brasia and her her brother um, who we're referring to him as deal deal uh, they came and spent the night last night and when he woke up this morning uh, Briasia was missing to be clear did he say when he woke up that morning Briasia was missing yes when he made that statement having woken up and Briasia was missing um, what impression did that create for you as an officer well, it's 8.42 in the morning, so at that time I was thinking maybe Mr. Dinkins just woke up and realized that uh, she was missing. Um, but later in the conversation, he ends up saying, I've been looking for her for a few hours. Okay. Um, uh, while you were having that discussion with him then, where was Aisha Lankford at? She is back in her car, I believe. Okay. At some point in time, does she approach to listen to the conversation between yourself and Mr. Dinkins? Yes. Um, and then describe the dynamics that developed as the two parties are there and you are just trying to gather details. As I'm trying to gather details, they get into a verbal argument. They start yelling at each other. Um, Aisha is upset, like, you lost my child. You lost my child. And Mr. Dinkins uh, kept replying, I didn't lose your child. You know, she's gone. Or she's missing from, I woke up, she was missing. Um, she ended up uh, just getting upset and she took DL back to the car and I proceeded to, um, to speak to Mr. Dickens to try to get more info. Okay. Now, um, at the point that Aisha had gone back to her car, what types of personal information were you trying to collect from Mr. Dinkins? Uh, every time I go to a call um, and there's going to be a report generated, uh, I always get the name, date of birth, uh, personal information, address, phone numbers, place of employment, different things like that that we all need for a report. Okay. As you were going through that process with Mr. Dinkins, um, describe what occurred? Uh, he gave me his name. He gave me his date of birth. Uh, I asked for his address next. Uh, he said he didn't know his address. Um, I was like, yeah, you don't know your address? And he's like, yeah, it's somewhere down by Ralston Perina. And that is the complete opposite side of the city that we're on. Um, I said, okay. And I was like, uh, what's your phone number? And he's like, oh, I don't know my phone number either. I was like, how do you not know your phone number? And he's like, well, hold on a minute. And he looked up his phone and he proceeded to find his phone number and gave it to me then. Okay. Um, are telephones a device that become very important tools for law enforcement during the course of investigations? Yes. Explain. Uh, they're basically a, a, a digital footprint of yourself. Uh, everything you do is pretty much uh, becomes um, saved on that phone. Every text you send, every uh, thing you Google, everything that you do on that phone, it's a digital footprint that follows you around forever. All right. Um, and that being said, did this cell phone of Mr. Dinkins actually become very important in the course of the investigation? Yeah. All right. Um, is the telephone then associated with um, the phone that he has very important? Yes. Um, and in the course of investigations, do law enforcement then take those telephone numbers and apply for search warrants? Yes. Okay. Now, within the context of that conversation then, did you speak to him about just your own experience as an officer when people call in and say that their children are missing? Yeah, I did. I said, hey, don't be offended by this, but based on my experience doing this job, um, a lot of times the kids are still inside the house. I go, would you mind if I um, go into the apartment one more time and take a look? What was his response to that request? He said he already looked. She's not there. And so I asked, do you mind if I, t can I take another look? He said, sure. Okay. Where did you proceed at that point? Uh, we backed, walked back to the apartment door and we were greeted at, outside the front door by his uh, girlfriend, Andrea. Okay. Um, Officer Burkle, I'd like for you to come down to the diagram so that we've got some perspective where that front door to apartment number eight is relative to the parking lot and also um, Costco because we had this special recordings just got better. Drawn over by Eastern and Veterans. But let's
does leave everything here relative to River Glide and Fed Island. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to everybody that's coming. And I appreciate everybody coming in here. But I don't understand. It says I have 103 people in here only have 28 likes. Really? 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 Hit the like. All right, let's get back to it. Like I said, after this, I'm going to show the body cam. Street. So we're gonna and it's just pull up in here, and it's a little longer entrance. We got to go up. But the building's gonna be. So there's a bunch of buildings. So as you pull into the entrance right here. Oh, and this is all parking lot here. This is all parking lot. This is the building right there. All right, and then providing Costco so that we know where Costco is located at. The tree line right here, Costco. Okay. Officer, if you could please just step off to the side and point that out to me again. Yeah, uh, it's that. very diff it's very difficult. Um, I know with the, the board and the positioning yourself, but if you step off to the side sure. and just show that to me so I can see what you were discussing. And then Officer Burkle, what I'll do is we'll walk this for purposes of our written record. Over there behind your seat, there's a pointer. Can you see that, Officer Burkle, um, on the witness stand? Okay. All right. Now, as we're looking at the diagram, um, have you drawn Jersey Ridge? What direction does Jersey Ridge run? North south. All right. Um, and then um, does 53rd intersect to Jersey Ridge? It does. What direction does 53rd run? Let's go east west. We've got to disregard this north up here. North is actually going to be this way. So Certainly. This now, um, is um, the apartment complex located on the north side of 53rd or the um, south side of 53rd? North side. Okay. And then can you show us on the diagram just. Welcome, Melissa Cook, and welcome to Donna Just Being Real. Glad to have you. And thank you, Money Shot and Rock. Rocky, thank you, everybody, for hitting that like. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right. This is my first time catching it live. And welcome, too. I'm glad that you caught me. That you caught me. All right. Let's get back to it. generally where you had depicted um, at the um, a drive going into the apartment complex and just some samples of buildings that you had drawn. So that's the entrance right there. Um, there's multiple pods. There's hundreds of apartments in there. Sure. There's multiple pods. And all of them, when you come in, will be apartment, apartment, apartment. Then it starts to dip back and goes apartment, 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 apartment. Then it comes back towards the entrance. And then you'll keep driving down. And it's the same thing. Um, as you pull in, this is all parking lot right here. And the building is right there. With the tree line and Costco. Okay, and then for purposes of our written record, um, Costco would lie what direction relative to the building where apartment number eight was situated? East. East, okay. Now, um, in that parking lot area, do you access the front door from that parking lot or do you have to go somewhere else to access the front door to apartment number eight? There's four apartments on the front of the apartment and then there's four on the back. This is apartment eight. You have to walk around through the back to access their apartment. Okay, so then essentially, would it be on the Costco side of that physical structure? Yes. Okay, all right, go ahead and take your seat, and thank you for that. I appreciate that. Ooh. Ah. 
Hey. Officer Burkle, um, uh, when um, uh, you had reiterated that you would like to take another look, at the point that you proceeded back to apartment eight, what did Mr. Dinkins do? He walked back there with me. Okay. Now, is there a sidewalk that runs the distance yeah. to the back side of that building? The whole thing is, yeah, there's sidewalks that um, get you to each apartment on the front side and the back side. Um, did you have any sense of the proximity of Mr. Dinkins to yourself as you approached apartment number eight? Uh, he was within, he was, he was near me, okay. within five, ten feet. And then describe what happened when you got to apartment number eight. Um, Andrea was standing outside. The, no, we, I think we knocked. We knocked on the door. Andrea came down. Um, I identified myself. Uh, I was in uniform. I explained to her. I said, based on my experience, um, a lot of times these kids are hiding inside the uh, house or apartment. I go, uh, would you mind if I come in and take another look? Uh, she looked at me, and then she pointed at Henry, and she's like, did he say that's okay? And I looked, and I was like, yeah. And she's like, okay, come in. And so I went in. Uh, it was a small apartment. It's a one-bedroom apartment. And I proceeded to uh, look around in the apartment, looking under the beds, looking in the closets, looking in the kitchen, and... I didn't see any indication of her being in there. Okay. Officer Broca, with you being inside apartment number eight, um, uh, was there anything about the condition of the apartment that would have given you pause for concern? And let me be more specific. Was there anything in that apartment that would suggest that something terrible had happened in the apartment? Uh, not at that time. I mean, I'm just looking for... Uh, to make sure she's not there. Okay, so does it look like a normal apartment? Yeah. All right. Um, uh, did you check closets? Yes. And of course you indicated under the bed? No. Yep. Uh, would you even check cupboards? I didn't look inside cupboards, no. Okay, but she's not there. Right. Um, while you were up there checking the apartment, did Mr. Dinkins come into the apartment? No. Um, and so um, when you had gone in to check, had you lost sight of where he was at? Yes. Um, describe then what you discovered. Um, as I, uh, I was only in there for five minutes, mm -hmm. you know, as I came back outside, um, I need more information from Henry. You know, I believe he's the complainant who called me wanting to file this missing person report, and I don't have a lot of information yet. So I'm, I come outside, and I'm like, where's Henry at? And I, can't, I go to the front of the building, the side, and I don't see him anywhere. Okay. Um, what do you do at that point? Uh, I ended up calling him with the number that he provided to me. Okay. And then when you called Mr. Dinkins with the number that he provided to you, did he answer that phone? No. Okay. Um, was that the only call then that you made to him throughout the course of that morning? No, I made six phone calls in that, in that uh, first hour. And in those six calls that you made in that first hour, did he ever pick up any of those calls? He did not, and I was unable to leave a message because his voice box was full. Okay. At some point then, do you try to contact him in a different way? I do. Explain. Uh, I ended up texting him, identifying myself as Officer Burko, because uh, obviously he wouldn't have my phone number. And I said, I need him to call me back. Uh, so I can get more information, so I can file this report. Okay. What time did you send the text? It was uh, 1043, I believe, so a little over two hours after um, the initial call came in. All right. Um, uh, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, uh, there's been testimony offered that Aisha Langford's um, uh, conversation with Mona Varelli occurred at 829. Um, uh, did you get dispatched after 829 a.m.? Yes. All right. Um, will your body-worn camera... Um, uh, does it have any type of date or time that appears on that footage to give us a perspective of when your initial contact would have occurred with the parties? Yes. Okay. All right. And then, did Mr. Dinkins ever return your text? Never returned my text. He called me at 12.04, and when he called me, he told me that he's walking into the police department. Okay. Now, do you do a search of the area out there? Yeah. Describe the search that you conducted. Earlier, you know, things just aren't sitting right. And so I contacted my supervisor, Sergeant Willie, and I said, things just aren't adding up here. And so he came out. Uh, then we called for more officers. Um, and we eventually got a picture from Aisha of what Briasia looked like. And like I said, there's, you know, a few hundred apartments out there and businesses. So we went knocking on every single door. And some answers, some no answers, but we were looking for her. And... Uh, nobody had seen her, and nobody had seen anything suspicious, and so we were just looking for more answers. Okay. If you were to compare the dynamics of this missing child report to two prior missing child reports that you'd handled in the past, 
how would you compare your feeling? Uh, like I said, something just wasn't sitting right with me. Uh, we had gone to different lengths that I have never personally done in 19 years at that time. Uh, then we ended up getting drones out, uh, searching fields, uh, going to businesses, because uh, it's on 53rd Street, going to different neighborhoods, things like that. Okay. Was that entire area along 53rd Street to com um, include both commercial businesses but also residential areas um, canvassed and searched by law enforcement? Yes. Um, did the Detective Bureau um, end up coming out that morning? Yes. Okay. I um, mean, if you could just give us a sense of just the manpower and how they were responding out to the area when things weren't sitting right with officers, how would you describe that? Uh, as the day went on, just. Laura and welcome. Glad to have you on Donna Just Being Real. Glad to have you. All right. Let's get back to it, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure everybody's hitting that like. I have. Oh, shoot. This is 194, if this is correct. And only 45 likes. Oh, come on. Let's work with the math. Let's do better with the math. Let's do better with the math. All right. Let's get back to it. Now, the body cam's going to come in soon. But I just want you all to hear what the officer had to say. Because I was so I was wondering. Because I said, I can understand. I just, I felt so sorry for the officer. Because he's doing the best he can. He's not getting no help. Because everybody, you'll see. You'll see. Let me stop talking. Let's get back to it. More officers kept coming and coming. Uh, as we were... Uh, as sources were needed, you know, sure. um, we had a lot of ground, a lot of area to cover, and we just kept uh, more officers kept coming to help. Okay, and, and were there any breaks at all to give any indication of where Briasia was at? No. All right. Now um, let's talk about um, Aisha. So Aisha had left um, at, um, with Notorious. When you contacted her, did she give you an indication of um, uh, collecting information for law enforcement to utilize? Yes. Um, and what had she been um, uh, collecting for law enforcement to utilize? Uh, well, I, I contacted her to get it because she had left prior to me being able to speak to her about it because she was frustrated. Um, and then uh, I, I tried to get a little background on the story when Briasia went over, when DL went over, and she provided that to me. She said, um, and then I said, you got pictures because we need pictures of what Briasia uh, currently looks like. Okay. Now, Aisha has testified um, at this point in time, um, and she described a narrative of events. Let me ask you this. Um, did she indicate um, uh, um, what date Mr. Dinkins um, had come in to contact with DL and Briasia? Yes. Um, and what was your understanding relative to July 10th? Uh, Mr. Dinkins went over to the grandmother's house to uh, pick up DL. And while he was there, uh, they asked if anybody else wanted to go. And Briasia and the older brother both wanted to go. Uh, but Mr. Dinkins said that uh, he'll take Briasia. But he's not taking the older brother. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> and then from there, then, was there a discussion about how she found out Briasia was purportedly missing? Ooh, I didn't see you up in here, Emmanuel. And blessings to you. Thank you for being here, Emmanuel. Thank you for being here. All right. All right. We'll get back to it, ladies and gentlemen. Hugs and kisses to you, Emmanuel. How did she find out? Right. Yeah. She said uh, she received the phone call that morning. From who? From Mr. Dinkins, that he woke up and Briasia was missing. And then did she share with you any information um, about what DL um, uh, told her um, after they left the apartment complex that morning and she went to look for pictures? So after their verbal argument, uh, when she took DL back to the car and they left, uh, DL told her that uh, Mr. Dinkins uh, came into the room that Briasia and the hour sleeping in and woke Briasia up and said, let's go. And she got up and left. Okay. And then DL, did DL indicate whether or not he'd ever seen um, Briasia again after that? No, he said he started crying, went back to sleep, and never woke back up until Andrea came in and during daylight time, okay. sometime in the morning. And then did you have a chance to speak with DL about those particular topics? Yeah. And what was that what DL confirmed for you? Yeah. All right. Did you also have um, an opportunity to speak with Andrea Culberson? Yes. Um, did Andrea Culberson um, provide you a, a description of what had occurred the previous evening after the children had arrived there at the um, apartment complex? Yeah. All right. Um, and then um, did she give you a timeline of what had occurred early that morning when she woke up and what she discovered? Yeah. Okay. And then what was your understanding of the time that she had woken up? Due to being a one-bedroom apartment, uh, she, they let the kids, both Riege and Dale, sleep in the bed while her and Mr. Dinkins uh, laid on the air mattress out in the living room. 
She said she woke up uh, around three o'clock, noticed Mr. Dinkins was no longer there, and uh, but she noticed his phone was still at the apartment, so she never called him. Okay, and then did she notice Brie Asia gone at that point? She said, yeah, Brie Asia was gone at that okay. point. Let's talk about Mr. Dinkins um, and um, what he was wearing at the apartment complex. Ms. Cunningham, I apologize for sure. the interruption, but I think this would be a natural break sure. uh, in your questioning. We will take our mid-morning break. Um, uh, we'll be in adjournment for 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I had all this redness. It's all. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, may the record reflect that I've shown counsel what you are to state in exhibit number 127. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to get into the body cam, okay? So everybody focus on the body cam. Andrew Andrew says something. Nobody noticed he didn't use his key when the officer asked to search the house, but the lady said he creeped up the stairs as if he had keys. Mm-hmm. You're paying attention, too. Mm-hmm. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back. Let's watch his body cam. Hope everybody's comfortable having crunch and munch, cocktails, whatever it is, but we're getting into it tonight. Yeah, and oh, I, uh, currently what's happening in the trial, everybody, um, you know, they done. They, they, they all done. So basically just waiting for the judge to make a decision. So probably tomorrow he'll have a decision, but we already know it's going to be guilty. But the sad part about it, I think other people's guilty too. Hmm, my thoughts and opinion. Let me know yours. Let's get back to it. And make sure you share, 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 share. May I approach your honor? You may. Um, I'm heading in with Jamar to state exhibit 127 for purposes of identification. Um, are you familiar with what this exhibit is? Yes. Okay. Uh, now, um, what is this exhibit? Uh, it's a video of the actual events that occurred that day. Of my body came. All right. Um, were you out for several hours that day working this investigation. Yeah. Um, as far as what's depicted um, on this recording, um, is this just a portion that would show your contact with Aisha Langford, Mr. Dinkins, and Andrea Culberson, and then what you started to do shortly after you exited that apartment? Yes. Um, and is that an accurate depiction of what was documented on your body-worn camera? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move to introduce State's Exhibit 127. No objection. No objection. Exhibit 127 will be admitted. Your Honor, may we publish... You this may. exhibit, thank you. Last name? Langford, L A N K F R D. Date of birth? 8 28 of 1991. Address? Uh, 614 West 63rd Street, apartment number one. Phone number? 563 yep. 676 4247. Okay. Um, and Henry lives here? Yeah, I guess so. This is where he told me to come. Okay. Um, he don't even know how long she's even been gone. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, her their daughter's name? Bria B R E A E A S I A B R E A S I A. Yes. Okay. So R L T E R R E L L. Okay. What's her middle initial? D. E. Her date of birth? Twelve four zero nine. Um, okay. What's up, Henry? So when was the last time you saw her? She was in the house. Yeah, when was the last time you saw her? 
9.30. Last night? 9.30. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. When was the last time you saw her? She was in the bed when I went to She was in the bed? Yeah. When you went to bed last night? Okay. Um, this is crazy, man. This yeah. is like, you know what I'm saying? I know she fucking going fucking hysterical, big brother. Yeah. D-I-N. K-I-N-S. I'm going to have to roast this man a little bit. He think he's fine. He think he's some sort of good looking man. Like he's God's gift to women. Before Give me what you got to right. report, chop. Report, chop. <laughs> well, let, me take, let me change the setting. That's my co-host, the real Jack Newtown. Yes, that's my co-host. All right. So he might say little things back and forth, you know, but he's here. Um, I can't stand him with these rotten gold teeth in his mouth. Look at him. He think he fine with a stupid rag on his head. Why do people walk outside with do-rags and bonnets out in the street? I just don't get it. I really just don't get it. Hmm. Oh, well. Let's get back to it. Uh, your date of birth, Henry? August 2nd, 72. Is this your home address? No. What's your address? It's down by Ross and Karina. I just, yeah, I, I just know that. I, I don't, don't know your address. I don't address. know your address. Do you know your phone number? Uh, hell no. I don't know that That's what I got, I don't Henry, you don't know where your daughter is, you don't know your address, and you no, don't no, know your no, phone no, number. No, for real, this dude don't know his address. You think I'll be lying, but... Well, no, I should... It's, it's kind of a, I, don't, I don't call myself. I know, but you gotta know your number. But you know your passcode you know your to your phone. Exactly. And to my, he don't know his number. I don't call myself. We all don't call ourselves, yeah. but we know our number. Yeah, and and he knows you know he has that phone locked since he since it was report that he was looking up child porn. I mean CP. I'm sorry, CP. Mm -hmm. He was looking at you know underage stuff. So and the, and the thing and, about and he probably did it on the phone too. So obviously there's a passcode on that phone he has to remember. So if he remembers his passcode to his phone, why don't he remember uh remember his address? Great point. Great point. And I don't, and I I noticed, well, I didn't watch all the trial. I caught, you know, I caught a, a big majority of it. But I don't think, Jack, that they, they brought it up about this, um, him looking at these little kids. That's why I just happened to find that news clip. And I was like, whoa, but I'm not surprised. And, and it they said they specifically, he was looking for underage uh, black girls. Yes, they did say that, didn't they? Mm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's resume. Yes. I don't, so this is your girlfriend's address here? This is the Fred. Okay. Okay, here go my phone right here. I bet people uh, think of banging on it. Mm. 563 yep. 726 4078. 4078? 4078. Okay, what was she last wearing? In the bed. Uh, what you have on some shorts? What color? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't What's know. her height and weight, you think? She's a little taller than he is. She's just okay. She's a little taller than that. Yeah. Okay. What's her, what kind of, what's her hair look like? She has dreads. Long. Dreads. Yeah. Long. Long and dreads hair? Yep. Like shoulder length or yeah. middle of the back? Down here. Okay. Mid back, dreads. Right? Is that how we would yes. label that? Yes. Um, she had shorts on. She had, she had a shirt. All white, white, white t-shirt, yep. Yeah. And you guys don't have alarms on your doors if the door is open? No. Okay. Um, and listen, I know it sounds dumb. I, I've lost my kids too. Okay. Um. Actually, mine just happened last week, and we went back in, and we found him in the bedroom. No, we just searched. Okay, just, just I, I'm going to ask you, to, who who have you called? Who? Oh, what doors call. have you knocked on? I, mean, I, I, I don't know these people out here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just, but I called her. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And she told me she was at work. At first, I was riding around looking. And then me and my son started riding around looking. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then, so how long ago did you? Has it been an hour? It's been a couple hours. A couple hours? A couple hours. Okay. Um, have we called grandmas? Have we called cousins? That's what I, that's what I just asked. She the one. I don't know all that. She knows all that. She, she okay. knows all that. Not me. Okay. Do we have a picture? She does. Okay. Yeah. Mom. Yeah. 
She got in the kitchen as well. Who's the girl that lives here? Andrea. Andrea? Yeah. What's Andrea's last name? Culverson. Culverson. He need a picture of her. You don't have nothing with you right now? Okay, that's fine. Have we called um, family? I've called everybody. I have my okay. uncle out riding around. My mom's Man, on the way out here. My we've friend's been everywhere. on the way out we've here. We've been every okay. fucking way. And, and she's she's going to be with a friend inside some apartment. No, that's most why I said I'm, I'm going to still look. Okay. She don't, we don't know anybody out here. That's yeah. the thing. She would have never, she would, How many, she would have never, first she, of all, she would have never woke up at 8 o'clock in the morning. She would have I, never, she would have, I'm just saying, that, that ain't what she I'm saying. I, I know you didn't say Guys, guys, this isn't the time to fight. Exactly, I don't give a fuck about you walking, no, listen, nigga, you that, lost her though. How did I fucking lose Because it? you was watching her, Henry, what the fuck do you mean? But, hey. I'm gone, sir, come on, D. Listen to me. This man is a full-blown sociopath. The reason why I say that, because he could just lie without, with ease. They'll lie about everything. Just like, um, for example, a sociopath lot, they'll take the cookie out the cookie jar. You see them took it out and they're eating the cookie. And they'll say, no, I didn't take it. But you're eating the cookie. I didn't you, take the cookie. You have the tape and it'll be on video. Yeah. It'll be, be, video. It'll, be it, it'll be, hey, it will be 4K, 4K and 4K mm -hmm. HD model. And you see them take the nasty hands they didn't wash into the cookie mm -hmm. jar and then ate the cookie and then you say you ate the cookie no i didn't here's the tape they show it is that me no that ain't me i wasn't wearing that but you're wearing that right now uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about you must be blind uh uh, uh, uh you must have been drinking you must be high you must be on dmt i don't know what you're talking again. about that's when they start to gaslight you. That's the gaslight. Then they'll then, then they'll say, face. "Do you need some help? Do you need do you need counseling? <laughs> do you need Jesus?" Yep, I can't stand these sociopaths. I can't stand them. And if y'all watch, I did the interrogation. So check my past commentary. I did the um with the interrogation, and you'll just see him in there. It's just like lies after lies. This man is, he should have never been born. Mama and daddy laid down and they had Satan Jr. by the name of Han Hawk, Ham Hawk, Henry Dinkins. Reason. Ham Hawk should have been a lawyer if he, that much line he does. Well, you guys gotta, you guys gotta come together right now. This isn't a time to fight about it. Okay. Um, so, well, hey, if you, how am I supposed to, what, what do you want me to do? And look at this. And look at this stupid look he got with his hands up. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Yeah, uh huh. Really? I can't stand this man. I can't stand him. I can't stand him. I can't stand the look of him. And he thinks he's so fine. You should see when he walk inside now, the courtroom like he's struggling. I, I got a question. Uh huh. Oh. Isn't he? Uh, is his condition as a registered sex offender? He, he could. He can't be around around minors. Then why is he around minors? Yeah, and another thing too is well, I'm going to show that clip later. This is kind of a long live stream, so hopefully y'all comfortable, you know, relax, whatever. Because I got a bunch of clips. We're doing catch up. All right, but yeah, and guns and stuff. Why they got a bunch of guns? Well, I'll save that thought for later. You know what? Let, let's say that later. We get to that. One. I don't want to throw people off. Let's focus on this body cam. But you're right. Mm -hmm. Great point. Resume. Uh, RJ said, RJ Sim says, it's really the grammar for me when she said that she don't question her grandkids. Ah, uh, you're talking about with the grandma. Ah, uh, you must have watched that. Mm -hmm. She's a very interesting person, isn't she? Resume. Henry, let's go inside the apartment one more time. Time. Look, this happens more often than you think. We just, I mean, oh, well, I understand why she's upset. But when I'm trying to help, she can't run away from me. I don't want to deal with the issue. Yes. You got to keep it level here. You know that. I learned that a long time ago. Um, how many times have you guys stayed out here? 
this is their first time. Oh, it's the very first yeah. time she's ever stayed here. And then they're gonna stupid 4X white t-shirt. I'm so tired of Dawn t-shirt. What was going on with this t-shirt? There was a couple people left some comments about it. And I'm glad that y'all did because it helped me to, you know, see things because I'm so confused with the white t-shirt. All right. And I also see Nell Gigi. Hugs and kisses to you, girl. Hugs and kisses to you. All right. Resume. And so she, she, has never, but they never stayed. she has never stayed here. So I wonder just This is such a small we get, she's not in our left. I'm fucking mad. She's gonna open the door, man. She's she, she's gonna open. What what's her name? She's gonna open. Hi there. Are you Andrea? Yeah. Okay, Andrea. Um, what's your date of birth, Andrea? 9383. 9383. And this is 2744 number 8. Yeah. And what's your phone number? 638 Yep. 639 8716. 8716. So tell me about, like, when was the last time you saw her? She was here. When? Uh, Okay, and you guys never heard her come down, walk out. There's no forced entry or anything like that. Uh, okay. Um, do you mind if I just come in and take a quick look? I'm not concerned about anything else. I just want to come in because probably 50% of the time we still find them. Inside. Just look at her protecting her man. These are all my thoughts and opinions. She need to be on the next episode uh, for my man because she definitely one of them. Just look at her. Look how silly you look wearing that t-shirt. What's going on with the white 4X t-shirt? This is insane. They look like Jehovah Witnesses at, at, a, at a lake getting baptized. Mm. This is insane. All right, but make sure y'all watch the part when she says, does he know about it? What she says, does he know about it? Is he okay with it? What do you mean okay with it? First of all, he living in your house. He ain't got no job. He must be drug dealing. Okay, so what what do you worry about? What he? Mm, I get angry. All right, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Inside the place um, when this happens, I listen. I go in all sorts of places. I don't care how big. Is he aware of this? What's that? Is he aware of this? Yeah. Eight seven one six. So tell me about like when was the last time you saw her? I had to rewind. She was here. When? Uh, what time was that? Probably like I don't know. Maybe she was here. She was here. Okay. And you guys never heard her come down, walk out. There's no forced entry or anything like that. Uh, okay. Um. Do you mind if I just come in and take a quick look? I'm not concerned about anything else. I just want to come in because probably fifty percent of the time we still find them inside the place. Um, when this happens, and well, I kind of do my face kind of right now. What's that? My face is kind of right I listen. I go in all sorts of places. I don't care how big. Is he aware of this? What's that? Is he aware of this? Yeah. And welcome, Dreamer. So I got it. Is he aware of it? Who cares if he's aware of it? So much of places is a mess. Who cares? It's a child that's missing. Cause you didn't care about that kid, did you? Mm-hmm. All right, reason. What's her name again? Bree. Was there any fights or arguments or anything last night? No. Bree is her name? Where was she sleeping at? Your bed? So where were you guys sleeping at last night? You guys slept out here? Look in the closet again. Huh? 
huh? I know, I'm just telling you, you'd be surprised what we've... So she was sleeping in the bed with her brother? And you guys slept out here? Okay. What time did you guys wake up? Now, uh, me, I was still asleep. I don't know what time everybody else got up. Well, what time did you wake up? Oh, goodness, I can't. I, I'm just, I can't. I don't know what time I was Okay, like 30 minutes ago, two hours ago? Two hours ago? Okay. Uh, hey, do you, has she, does she have any friends out here? Like, has she ever played with any of the neighbors? Okay, are you going to come out and help look or not? Miss Toy, that is the great question. I'm wondering, what did these women find attractive in him? All right, let's let's go down a little bit of memory lane of some of these these pictures that I I found of him. Just look at him. He looked just like a ham hock. There's nothing attractive about him. Look over here too. Look at him. Take those little thug pictures. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Here we got another one. What is it? What is y'all seeing? See, he picked these women. This is the mother. He picked these women with these low self-esteem that has not really been out here, you know, on quality dates and been around a gentleman. You know what I mean? So he come around with his little money, his little happy meal money and stuff, and these women just jump for it. Because, I mean, look. look happy look, meal look. money. <laughs> <laughs> happy meal money. Be happy so, to have so, a happy he, meal. so he got the happy meal for two ninety nine. He yeah, got that two dollars and ninety nine cent money. Mm -hmm. He can't even take him to Chili's two for twenty five. He can't even do that. He's, Shoot, he's, he can't. He can't go to Hardee's with two for ten. He sure can. And look at her. Look at her. You can tell there's something something off about her. See, he picked these type of women. Mm -hmm. Just look. Just yeah, look. they insecure ladies who mm -hmm. you know had. Probably had daddy issues who probably have mm -hmm. been abused as, when they was young. And these predators tend to go after those. Uh, and he's a, a registered offender. And um, so he knows the protocol, him being a registered offender. Oh, I'm sorry, exactly, Jack. Let me read this one here. Um, JJ said, can you imagine the fight and horror being that the 10-year-old girl with this ugly forced him on her and how her last moments were? I just, it, every time I just think about it, Jay, I just get angry. Especially when, when the brother testified and he said that she kicked him. She kicked him because either two reasons. He was feeling on her. Or number two was he was snatched out and she was like, help. And this is going to haunt this brother for the rest of his life. And it's so sad. Because that baby didn't do nothing wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. That's going to bother him. And Okay, I, so, he failed, so he failed to register. They saying he failed to register. That's even worse. Yeah, because I think when he probably moved over here, he didn't register. Oh, okay. He you know, probably didn't register right. in, in Iowa. Is that correct? Yeah, something like that. So that's oh, when they, okay. I think, I, I hope I got this right. I could be wrong. So ladies and gentlemen, I stand to be corrected if you know anything else. But what I'm getting is he moved over here. He didn't register. I guess wherever you move, you're supposed to, you know, let people know where you're at. He didn't do it. So at this time when this whole thing was missing, 
And when she was missing, it was like, I guess they figured, well, we can get him on this. Let's lock him up quick, get him on something. And then when they realized she was missing, they're keeping him in there. Am I making sense? You got that? Oh, hopefully you do. Okay, um, Beaver Boy says, can you guys take your shirts off? What the heck? It's just some sort of troll. Oh, Lord have mercy. There's always one in the group. Just never, and never know. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I apologize. It could oh. be. It could be the white T-shirts you was talking about. It, that could be the case. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm so sorry, Beaver Boy. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He's guilty and girlfriend too, and mama should never let her um go there. Exactly. Please. I agree. This could have been all prevented. So you know when you watch that look like a typo. Let her hold there. Not yeah. is is go. No. Just mm -hmm. so oh. So um what was I saying and stuff? I forgot what I was just saying. <laughs> Let's get back to it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get back to it. Officer Burkle, um, did you happen to notice um, what kind of shoes Mr. Dinkins was wearing? Yes. Describe that for us. Uh, very gold, shiny gold shoes. They, they, they stood out. Okay. Um, and then today, um, do you recall anything about um, the condition of the shoes other than noting that they were very shiny and gold? No, I just remember them being very shiny and gold. Okay, all right. Um, your body-worn camera, is this something that would be accessible to detectives so that they could look at what was documented for his clothing and shoes when you had your contact with him? Yes. Okay. Um, I have no further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Freeze, thank you. Good morning. Officer, uh, in that video, the T-shirt that Mr. Dinkins is wearing, uh, does that video accurately and fairly depict the condition of that shirt? It should. Uh, when you uh, observed the clothes that Mr. Dinkins was wearing, specifically the shirt, it appeared to me to be fairly clean. Would you agree with that? Uh, I, at that time, I'm not really looking at the clothing. I'm just, so, I mean, I remember being white. Did you notice any dirt stains or grass stains on it? Nothing. Any blood stains or blood spatter on it? No. And you mentioned on direct examination that DL uh, made a comment to you at some point that he saw and heard Mr. Dinkins awaken. Yes. At what point in the interview, at what point in time did DL say that? When they brought a picture back up to me, I re-met uh, with Aisha and DL. Okay. So you'd agree with me that DL had left the complex with his mother and then came back sometime later, and that's when he told you that Mr. Dinkins had awakened Briasia and said, let's go, right? Yeah. Now, the video we just saw when Mr. Dinkins come out of the apartment with DL, one of the first things you asked was, when's the last time you saw Briasia, right? Yes. And DL was right there with him, correct? Yes. And you'd agree with me that DL's kind of... Zion, great point. Why did he say it wasn't enough room in the car for the older brother he's driving? His son in the front seat and Bree and the older brother in the back seat. Exactly. Because he had an agenda. That's why. Low life piece of crap. All right, resume. Kind of a rambunctious little kid. Sure. And he was offering his two cents worth throughout the video, right? Correct. He was kind of involved in the conversation, even though he wasn't being asked questions, right? Correct. And he kind of confirmed, uh, gave his two cents worth that... It was last night, last time he saw her, right? Yes. He did not chime in at that point that it was at some point during the night where he saw Mr. Dinkins come in and awaken Briasia and say, let's go, right? He did not until I firmly questioned him later. And again, you only questioned him after his mother, who was upset, first of all, right? Yeah. She was angry, right? Not saying she shouldn't be. I mean, people have a whole range of emotions during these events, right? Yeah. Uh, but it was after he had spent time with his mother and come back that he had this story about Mr. Dinkins uh, waking up Briasia and saying, let's go. Yes. And the vehicles um, in the video, the first one's a black Camaro. Did you look at that Camaro at all? No. How about the Impala? No.
in, in your experience as a peace officer, um, the reaction and the demeanor of Mr. Dinkins did not raise any red flags to you, did it? No. That's all I have. Officer Burkle, were you troubled by the fact that he just left? Yeah. Were you troubled by the fact that you tried calling him multiple times and he never returned that call? Yes. Were you troubled by the fact that you sent a text and then you did not um, get, any, get any indication of his location until he said he was at the Davenport Police Department a little afternoon? Yes. All right. Um, it, did that seem very unusual? Very unusual for a complainant just to leave. All right. Now, um, as we looked at the video, and I don't know if you paid attention, but the T-shirt itself, um, did you notice areas um, on the T-shirt that looked like there would be um, sections that might be more damp where it was um, almost wet compared to other areas that were dry? You know, initially when I'm just there speaking to him, I'm not looking at his clothing because I'm not thinking anything suspicious yet um, that something further may have happened to Briasia. So I'm not really looking at his clothing up and down to see if uh, any the spots are on it. Okay, thank you. Now, um, when you um, uh, were talking with um, Mr. Dinkins, um, as we observed there on the body-worn camera, um, were you focused in at all on DL and what it is that he was saying? No. Okay. Was DL even being interviewed at that point in time? No. Okay. Can you even tell us what DL was saying when he was standing over there by your squad car? No. All right. Um, when Ms. Langford returned to provide a photograph or photographs of Briasia, did you then conduct um, an interview of Aisha Langford? Yes. And then from there, then, did you conduct an interview of DL? Yes. Was Mr. Dinkins anywhere near DL when you asked him about what he observed that night? No. All right. And then um, when you um, uh, um, spoke with um, um, Andrea Culberson, was that um, after you'd had the opportunity to speak with Aisha and DL and then collect a statement from her? No, I talked to Andrea before I talked to Aisha. Or DL. Gotcha, gotcha. And so is that where you gathered the information from her about waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning? Yes. All right. Um, I have no further questions. You would agree with me, sir, that on that video we just watched, nowhere there did Henry Dinkins say he had just awakened. No, he's, no. So there's testimony that you or another witness provided that put the words in Henry's mouth that he had just woke up. That didn't appear in that video anywhere, right? No, I knew he didn't just wake up. He said he's been looking for her for a couple hours. Okay. Um, but that video hasn't been edited. It's, it's true and accurate to the best of your recollection, right? Yes. In your interview with DL, did he indicate to you that he saw his sister get shot? No. Did he indicate to you anything about seeing a bloody machete? No. Did he indicate to you that he uh, saw a bloody machete and his father cleaning it off with bleach? No. That's all I have. He was 17 and a five-year-old. Wow. He should have never been born. Officer Burkle, is there a difference between the structure of a field interview versus formal interviews that are conducted at the Davenport Police Department? Yeah, you're confined more to a room, more safer place, feel more comfortable probably. Okay. Um, and um, as a matter of standard practice, when you go out to a scene, do you conduct field interviews of witnesses? Yeah. Um, however, is there always, um, almost always, a follow-up that's done by detectives of witnesses? In major cases, yes. And explain why there would be a follow-up by detectives. You know, initial reaction when you always get on scene is, you know, people's blood pressure gets up. They not, may not recall everything. Um, they, uh, when things calm down and they're able to process things, um, they start to, to recollect some things that... Emmanuel, you're so right. Poor kid was failed by the very people that were supposed to be protecting her. Emmanuel, this, this couldn't have happened. It wasn't like she was outside in front of the house and jumping rope and playing a game and then somebody came by with a truck and just snatched her. This is not the situation. She was thrown out to the wolves. And by the name of Henry Ham Hawk Henry Dinkins. Can't stand him. Resume. They may have forgot or not initially thought of. Um, so typically when they go down to the, the police station to speak with detec detectives, often it's days later um, or at least hours later. And they've had some downtime to uh, 
recall the events, how they happened. Okay. When we talk about an eight-year-old child, you know, considering those factors, is that something um, uh, that, um, uh, you know, should be considered? You've got an eight-year-old child. This is not something that's normal for an eight-year-old child. Do we always want to do follow-up interviews with an eight-year-old child? If they're available, yeah. Okay. I have no further questions. In your 20 plus years experience as an officer, however, you'd expect a witness, even a field interview, to relay that they witnessed a shooting, correct? Yeah. Or you would expect a witness, no matter how old, if they're old enough to comprehend, to say they saw their father with a bloody machete wiping it off with bleach, in your experience? Unless they were intimidated by him being in the immediate vicinity of him, uh, he may not want to. But Henry Dickens wasn't in the vicinity of DL when you interviewed him, right? No, That's after they left, no, so, the second time. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, the state calls Officer Jason Pojar to the stand. Okay, lady, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to um, pause here because I'm getting ready to go to another clip. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're getting, in, getting ready to get into another clip. All right, I'll put on a little music while y'all wait while I set it up, okay? Enjoy the music while you wait. Give me a second while I set up the next. Okay, we get ready to get into the next clip. Look at my notes here. Give me a second. Look at my notes and make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. We on day seven of the trial. Like I said, we're just doing clips. Just doing clips, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Well, day seven. And we're going to get into the quick stop. Remember the quick stop he was at? And everybody just kept talking about why he keep looking outside, looking outside. I think at that time, I could be wrong. I stand to be corrected, ladies and gentlemen. That this was the time that most likely Bree was in that car. Okay? And he was getting gas. All right. So this is the lead detective on the case. And he's going to talk a little bit. Then he's going to show the um, clip. Let me sure I got this right. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is the quick stop. Okay. All right. So let's let's get into this clip, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it. Let's hear what the lead detectives have to say. And like I said, this is day seven of the trial. May I approach your honor? You may. I'm handing you a state exhibit 145-1 to 145-26. I'd like you to look at that exhibit and tell me if you recognize it. I do. Okay, how do you recognize it? It is uh, still photos of the video footage we just watched of the quick shop and the defendant arriving there purchasing gas and cigarettes and filling up his vehicle and leaving. Okay. And then as we go through these still images, um, will it have a point in time where he um, is captured in an image where we can definitively see um, his clothing and what it looked like? There is. Okay. John, at this time, the state would move to introduce um, State's Exhibit 145-1 through 145-26. No objection. Those exhibits will be admitted. May I publish, Your Honor? You may. Okay. Ooh, ooh, John, you came in here hard. The mother left the cop because inside she knew she shouldn't have left. Her daughter let her excuse me let her daughter go with a sex offender. It was cool when he was molesting other people's kids. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, John. You got a point. There's something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. Right? Something to think about. Resume. All right. Just to set the stage, what do we see on page one? Um, you see the, the top picture is the headlights of the Impala as it's coming into the parking lot. What direction is it traveling into the parking lot? 
that's travel and it's traveling in the east. Okay. And then um, does it show it in that bottom photograph where it's parked? It does. Okay. Now, um, these next few pages, um, let's just go through these. Is this page two? Um, more um, photographs of what we see out in the parking lot before he enters the store. It is. Um, page three, would that be the case? Yes. Page four, would that be the case? Yes, um, in the bottom one shows him getting closer to the door. Okay, and then so um, as we look at that, and let me go back and look at page four real quick. All right. Would that be Mr. Dinkins um, more down here toward the lower portion? It is. Okay, and then on page five. Uh, more of the same. Okay, now. What point do we have him approaching that outside door? as documented on page six. Uh, you can faintly see he hasn't entered the store yet, but he's at the door. Okay, and so the counter says what time? Um, the timestamp on the sheet says 331.45, but it would be 333.45. And then in our bottom photograph? Um, he's just now entering the store. All right, now on page seven, does that simply show him there at the counter as purchases are being made? It does. Page eight, would that also be the case? It does. Page Page nine, is that also the case? Yes. Page 10, is that also the case? Yes. Page 11, is that also the case? It is. Page 12, is that also the case for that, that top photograph? Yes. Detective Obert, um, there are a number of images associated with his presence there at the cash register. Were there certain things in particular that was being captured as he stood there in the photograph? Yes, there was a couple, a few of them of stills where you can see the direction of his head is facing out towards the parking lot. Will that give us a sense of how many times he kept looking out toward the parking lot as you go through those series of photographs? Yes. All right. Now let's go to page 13. On page 13, what do we have here? Um, the top one is him getting closer to the entrance doors, and then the bottom one is him entering the business. Okay. So is this at the point of his first entry? Yes. All right. Um, as we look then, at this photograph or these photographs give us very specific physical descriptors. First of all, for his top. For his what? His top. Yes. Give white, white, white beater. Okay. The shorts. Um, again, they're white or blue uh, or light blue and then with darker blue and possibly some pink on them as well that come at it at like an angle or um, some sort of um, emblem or signature on there. Okay. And then the shoes. Um, if you want to push Pull it, it up, slightly sure. up. I will, absolutely. Clear shot, yep. So there, there are the gold shoes that were also seen on Officer Burkle's body camera. Going back to State's Exhibit 128, looking at what he was wearing when he came into the police department, and even looking at what he was wearing as far as clothing when he dealt with Officer Burkle. Is the t-shirt different? Compared to the quick shot, yes. yes. Are the shorts different? Yes. In search warrants that were applied for, were search warrants looking for the clothing that he had on when he was in the quick shop? We were set out to look for those pieces of article. Look at him with that nasty looking white beater. Look at him. And he think he fine. He think that's muscles. That ain't muscles. That's fat. Ridiculous. Piss me off. I think at this time, ladies and gentlemen, I stand to be correct to let me know, but I think at this time, um, Bree was in that car. That poor girl, the fear that she must have had. And I, my opinions, these are my thoughts and opinions. I could be wrong. I don't think it's the first time he touched that girl. Because let's let's just go back. The mother said on the stand, right? She said she met him when she was eighteen, and I guess he was thirty-seven, almost forty, something like that, right? And when she met him, she had Bree. And Bree was only a couple of months old. But she already had a son before Bree. Right? So here he comes. See, this is what I'm talking about. These, these, these snake in the grass type of men, they like to prey on single mothers. Okay? So she came, he came around. Now, I think if I could be correct, if I'm right, Bree's mother, Bree's father, excuse me, Bree's father's in prison. 
I don't know if he still is, but I think at the time he was in prison when they was doing all the search, whatever, and stuff like that. So here come Ham Hawk, like he gonna act like he the man and everything. You know, the the, the game, the game, the games that these some of these men do, right? So she ended up dating Ham Ham Hawk. So within the she said a year or two. I don't understand what she's talking about. Either was used with him for a year or two. That's what she's to understand. At that time, that's what she had DL, the son that they have together. But he really wasn't in the son's life, in and out. So I guess they went out, her and DL, her son, they were driving around. They happened to see him somewhere, stop, and they talked to him. It's like, oh, your son wants to spend time. You need to spend time with your son. It's like, okay, well, come this weekend, something like that. Isn't that crazy? You just bump up with the father at the corner store, and you just like, you need to spend time with your I don't understand. This This whole thing is just a hot, stinking mess. Yes, it is. All right. Spirit says, um, I'm with you, sis. Every time I look at this fat ham, <laughs> I get madder. I hate him. He knew that girl was dead and her mother had raw emotions on her face finding out. Yep. He lied without any remorse. That's a sociopath. They don't have no remorse. All right, resume. Articles of clothing, sorry. What steps were taken to try and identify the articles of clothing that he was wearing there at the quick shop? Uh, can you re ask that question? Yeah. What steps were taken to try and locate the articles of clothing he was wearing as depicted in the um, uh, um, quick shop video? Uh, search warrants at several residents and vehicles. All right, which vehicles? Uh, the Maroon Chevy Impala, the Camaro, the Black Camaro with the um, features or the imprints on them, and then as well as the Kings Highway Motorhome that is registered to Nita McQuay, um, the apartment complex at 2744 East 53rd Street, and Nita McQuay's apartment co complex at 1321 East 39th Street, apartment four, as well as 1909 Grand Avenue. Okay, I'll talk with you about 1909 Grand Avenue here in a minute. Um, were those shorts, that t shirt, and those gold shoes ever located in the course of the investigation? The shorts, um, we are confident to say we did not locate those. Um, the wife beater, white, uh, that's a fairly common thing to have. So we might have come across a couple of those uh, in one of the search warrants. Certainly. Um, in the back of the black Camaro, was there a white wife beater's t-shirt? I would. I can't speak on that. Okay. All right. Uh, did Mr. Dinkins actually have um, more than like one of the white t-shirts that you noted when he came into the department? Through search warrants, yes. We were okay. able to locate multiple white t-shirts. And the white wife beater t-shirt, was that... Um, another article of clothing um, uh, that was more common for him? Yes. Okay. All right. And then did you ever locate the gold shoes? No. What's the significance of 1909 Grand Avenue? <clears throat> um, the defendant had phone communication with a subject by the name of Genesis Johnson uh, the night on July 9th. Um, so detectives went out and spoke with her. Um, her first statements to police was that she hung out with the defendant that night. Um, so when we executed a search warrant on that residence to try to locate those those items that we just mentioned. And were they located at the residence of Genesis Johnson? They were not. To this date, were the, those gold shoes ever located? No. To this date, were those shorts ever located? No. All right. And then because of the nature of the T-shirt that he was wearing, um, do you believe that you've ever located that T-shirt? I can't say confidently. Yes sure. or no. Going back to State's Exhibit then 14, very simply, or page 14 of State's Exhibit 145, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, going back to um, our Exhibit 145, looking at page 14. All right. Just tell us what we're seeing here. Um, subject entering the store. On page 15. Um, the top one looks like he's about to head out, but then uh, he's turning back on the bottom one. Page 16. He's walking out of the store. Okay. Page 17. Walking towards the vehicle. Page 18. Um, still looks like he's walking towards the vehicle. 19. Uh, he's getting closer to the vehicle. And then actually from pages 20 through 36, is it just more of um, the still images capturing what we see out in the parking lot? Yes, which was captured in the video we watched. Okay. And then finally, let's just go to that last page for a time stamp. What time do we have him? The, the party. Um, it's at 336 on the timestamp, but uh, accurate entry time would be 338.
Detective Albert, after you completed your interview of Mr. Tinkins, um, what was your next step in the investigation? Uh, after I was done interviewing the defendant, uh, I also spoke with Aisha Langford and DL. Okay. Where did that conversation take place? At the Danport Police Station. Okay. What was the um, substance of your conversations with Aisha Langford? Uh, again, gathering her information and then um, understanding the family dynamics of uh, Bridget Terrell and DL and relationship with the defendant, and then how it came to be on the defendant having Briasia and DL for that night, and um, also clothing that was packed or worn uh, as part of it as well. Okay. Um, in those discussions that you had with Aisha Langford, um, uh, did she um, indicate to you where she had been at on July 9th when Mr. Dinkins came to pick up DL and then Briasia ultimately ended up leaving and going with the two subjects? She advised she was at work, which is on Checkers on East Locust Street. And actually, um, did you go ahead and collect her um, um, time card records just to um, um, lock down the times that she had been at work? Yes, I included what she was scheduled to work and then her actual timestamps. Uh, All right. Time and I would... Rep Oh, I would represent we've introduced that through Ms. Langford. All right. Now, um, when you were talking about the clothing items, though, um, was there any discussion about whether or not she would have packed pajamas for the children? Uh, I believe so, yes. All right. Um, did that um, particular fact um, become uh, um, something of interest um, when considering um, what happened after the children took their baths that night there at the apartment? Um, the changing of the kids' clothes or, for example, what we've heard is the changing of them into the large white t-shirts provided by the defendant. Okay. And then what size of t-shirt are we dealing with when we talk about large white t-shirts? Um, for the one that was located uh, on the defendant on that day, it was a 4XL. All right. Um, was there um, a large white t-shirt located with the skeletal remains of Riecha? There was. And what size was that? 4XL. All right. Um, now, when you talked with Ms. Langford um, at the department that day, um, it, could she provide you any definitive information about um, the um, shoes that Briasia would have been wearing when she went with Mr. Dinkins? Um, there was at least established some sort of sandal or flip-flop or slide um, and potentially white or blue. Okay. Um, and um, beyond that, was there a discussion of a potential pink flip-flop that she may have been wearing? That's correct. Okay. Now, um, as you went throughout the course of the day, then, um, uh, law enforcement, in terms of their perspective and what they would be looking for as far as clothing for Briasia or shoes that she potentially would have been wearing, um, what was in play? Um, the sandals, um, because Aisha Langford did just get some of the clothing back. Um, so the sandal and then so potentially some black shorts that she was wearing as pajamas and then a uh, large white t-shirt. Okay. All right. All right. The and four XL, sorry. The four XL. Okay. So what were the two on the shoes then that we were looking for? Um, this, the flip flops or sandals that were possibly pink or blue or white. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, now, once you concluded your interview with Ms. Um, Langford, who did you speak with next? DL. All right. What time of day would your interview with Aisha Langford have um, uh, um, started? Approximately 1.48 p.m. So were you done with your interview with Mr. Dinkins? Yes. Any information you gained from Aisha Langford then, you did, did you not have that? You didn't have that information available when you spoke with Mr. Dinkins. Would that be fair to say? No, it would be fair to say. And then um, when you spoke with um, DL, um, describe what occurred during that conversation. Um, we talked about this, the activities uh, over the course of the night and then what happened uh, this morning. Okay. Um, did DL provide information about um, where he, his father, and Briasia went after Mr. Dinkins picked them up at Grandma's house? Uh, he provided uh, the apartment complex okay. and the place that they went. Okay. But before that, did he um, talk about them having stopped up at um, a friend's and, of Mr. And Dinkins? Another friend's, yes. Okay. Um, and then did he describe what it is that they did at that friend's house? Uh, played video games. Was that consistent with what Mr. Dinkins had reported to you? Yes. All right. And then the address um, you were able to identify as what address? 509 Taylor Street. And that came through here. Who? Um, just through um, conversation with the defendant, we were able to figure out that's where that okay. subject lived after he identified who that was. And then when law enforcement reached out to um, Vincent Howard, did he cooperate essentially um, what Mr. Dinkins and DL had reported? That's correct. All right. Um, after going to the Howard residence, then um, DL, did he indicate the next location that the three of them would have gone to? Uh, the apartment complex. Okay. Did you know what vehicle the um, uh, um, three parties were in that day when Mr. Dinkins picked them up? Um, it was mentioned the Camaro, but in my interview with the defendant, uh, he wasn't entirely sure. 
Okay. Um, was the child pretty certain about what vehicle it was? Yes. Um, and did Danita Gardner even know what vehicle it was? And I don't know if, well, you didn't interview Danita Gardner, did you? I did later in the investigation, later and, on in the investigation. And then did she know what vehicle Mr. Dinkins had picked? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take off this clip because we've seen enough of this one. Now, what I'm going to get into is another clip. And if I'm correct, we're going to be focusing on is day 11. Mm -hmm. Let's get into day 11. So enjoy the music while you wait. Let me um change here. Change the, um, change the videos, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I screwed up a little bit. I'm looking at my notes. All right, we're going to focus on the video with him going to buy the bleach. All right, we're going to focus on that. Then we're going to get into day 11. All right, so this is the video of him buying the bleach. Mm -hmm. Low life piece of crap. Just look at him. Why would anybody want to deal with you? Mm, you look like you got bad breath with all those gold teeth in your mouth. All right, let's let's get let's get into the video. Oh, before we get into the video, before we get into the video, let me check. Did everybody vote? Did people vote? Let's see what we got here. We got ninety-two votes here, and the vote is: What do you think the judge verdict will be? Donna guilty, eighty-five percent. Ten percent says not sure. Five percent says not guilty. All right, let's get into the video. Describe what it is that we need to look for. As you do that, is it giving us a date? It does. Um, um, I'll point to it. Which is Friday, July 10th, 2020, and then 6.49 a.m. as it's counting. All right. Um, when generally does Mr. Um, uh, Dinkins first enter the parking lot in that maroon Chevy Impala? Um, it's going to be coming up here shortly, um, right before 6.50. Okay. And then can you, you give us a sense of what um, uh, direction it will be coming into the parking lot. Uh, I can point to it on the screen. Is that the Moose Chevy Impala that's coming that in? That is. Okay. Come and from the top right to the, to the left of the screen. And then the time generally would be what? 6.50. Now, is there a um, feed that shows us approaching the um, Walmart? Like if the person was to walk on foot and enter the business? Well, yeah, and, and we, we're probably going to be more circumspect, but will we see him approaching and waiting at doors for the store? Yes. Okay. Um, is the store open at this point in time? Not before 7 a.m. now. History Vault. Stream now thousands of the best... I can't remember what video it was I watched or what article I read, but they both knew, especially the mother. They knew. And how can a woman be with a man for six years? She said six years, and you don't you don't know this? Hmm. Yep. You know, that's what I know of, that they all knew, and that's what really peed me off about it. It was something I believe, don't quote me on, y'all have to look it up. But it was something like um, the mother was like, well, she kind of, I'm using my words, like I knew, but I never had a problem with him with my kids. Really? It's called grooming. He's grooming your daughter so you get what you want. And I don't think it was the first time he did this, did something to her. It was just this time she's older and he was scared she was going to tell. So he panicked and he killed her. These are my thoughts. All right, let's get back to it.
Detective Obert, what do we have here right now? Um, it is the general, one of the general entrances to the business camera views. Uh, it's 6.59 a.m. right now. Uh, we see the defendant standing uh, near two other people in line waiting to go into Walmart. Okay. Um, I know that we're not showing all views, but when he got there originally, was he able to get into the store? No, he approached the store at approximately 6.51, uh, went to both general and look at ham hop. Huh? See, everybody got the mask because this was, uh, what they say, July 10th, 2020. At that time, everybody was wearing masks. Look at them. Disrespectful, standing on that line like that. I can't stand him. Just look at him. Really pissed me off. All right, let's resume. Entrances and return back to his vehicle okay. and left. And then did he come back into the parking lot? He did. Okay. And what time would he headed back into the parking lot? At approximately 6.58. All right. So then is this the second time that he's approached the doors to enter the business? It is. All right. When are customers finally able to get into the store? Um, from this angle, uh, the defendant tries to go up to the door closer and ends up just walking over to the other entrance. Is this door. guy walking around with a belt? Uh, but we know he used the other door and he was eventually able to get in around 7 or 4 a.m. Okay, Jack, I'm lost. What are you saying again? Is this guy, uh, Ham Hawk face, walking mm -hmm. around with a belt in his hand? No, I don't think Is so. that a belt? Is that a belt in his hand? No, I don't think so. This is the time that he's um he came back to the house and he got his son. So he came back to the house and got a son. Now he's over here going to the Walmart to buy bleach. We all know what he's doing with the bleach. Yeah, to get rid of the there. evidence. Exactly. So this is the time. But now at this time, unfortunately, Bree is already deceased. Okay, so it's, it's his labor, later and keys. Okay. I thought it was right. a belt. He was walking around like he was whooping somebody. Oh, no, no, no. You probably see keys. Like when uh, the picture, they had like the... um. The thumbnail picture for the body cam. I thought he had a gun in his hand, but it wasn't. It was keys. You know, I call those when people got a bunch of keys. I call it janitor keys. <laughs> janitor <All right>. keys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they always got like fifty million keys. All right, reason. How is Mr. Dinkins dressed? Uh, gold shoes. Um, appears to be the same shorts that we um, had him, that he was wearing when he came down to the police station. Spirit, I totally agree with you. Every time I think about it, this poor little girl, just look at her. Just a beautiful little angel. Beautiful, beautiful little angel. And when she kicked her brother, she was calling for help, not trying to put anything on the brother, because I know this is going to destroy him. This wasn't the first time. He wasn't put first, and he wasn't protected. Those are two simple things that adults and parents are supposed to do for their children. That's their job. If you can't do it, don't have children. That's all I have to say. Resume. And white t-shirt and then uh, black durag. Okay. So still he has those gold shoes. That is correct. All right, Miss Toy says he probably covered her mouth while grabbing her out of the bed so she wouldn't be heard if she screamed, and that's when she kicked her brother. You have a point. And another thing too is I, I want to show the pictures. I I I don't know what video that was. Oh darn, I messed up on that one. But um, I was like, when you see the place, if y'all remember the body cam, you see how the place is. You see everything. And what really creeped me out was when the son said she was he was staring at Pri. And 
and Bree and and Ham Hawk was in the room together. Why are they in the room together? And you sitting outside, and you his biological son outside. Now, you going to tell me Andrea, the girlfriend, didn't see all this? You didn't think something was a little weird right there? Hmm? You didn't think anything was weird, Andrea? Hmm? Let's talk about Andrea real quick. You didn't... Uh-oh, got the wrong picture. Andrea, you didn't think anything was weird like that? Why is your man in that room like that? And also, you didn't think anything weird is... Why is your man outside Outside at 3 o'clock in the morning? You look out the window and he's with this girl and the girl is missing. What could they possibly be doing outside at 3 o'clock in the morning? It's not even his child. But you didn't do anything. You didn't. You didn't call the cops. You didn't protect. You just let it go. Didn't question me anything. I, I never heard of such a thing. First of all, this child is in your home. You are held responsible. You know, when children come to my house, I'm responsible for whatever happens to their children. And she should have she should have just definitely called the cops and did something to call the mother. What's going on here? And then he comes back in the house and then he just disappears again. And he takes the son and you just sitting there all calm, nothing. But all you can say to the officer, my place is a wreck. And is he does he know about it? Is it OK if you come in? Who is he? A child is missing. I don't know how nothing was happening. I don't know why there was no charges pressed against her. I don't know. I don't know how that, you know, I don't know how this, that state runs, their laws or whatever. But try that over here. <laughs> you would have been done. You would have definitely been in jail. All right, let's resume. Are we past the 7 o'clock hour at this point? We are. Where are we at? 7.01 a.m. Joanne, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Jo Joanne, Joanne, hope I pronounced your name right. If I'm butchering up your name, I truly apologize. I'm so bad with the um, names. All right, great point. You came here hard. Sex offenders love single women mm -hmm. with children. Yes, they do. Stop putting your children before people just because you trust them. Not even teachers, doctors, politician, politicians, politicians. Coaches, etc. They being around children. Exactly. I don't trust nobody. You don't trust nobody around your kids. You just don't do it. Mm hmm You don't. I don't understand. I, I just don't get it. And look at a dude like this. <laughs> you think I'll trust him around my kids? Oh my gosh. And having a baby by him? Ugh. Reason. Where are we at relative to our time frame? 
7.03 a.m., which would have been the, the approximate time of that phone ring, Clint. When you um, watched the video surveillance footage, um, was there any footage that ever um, uh, picked up the vehicle traveling at a point where we could see through that front windshield? There was. That was when he uh, was leaving the lot for the first time at approximately 6.54 a.m. There was a passenger. Okay. And then for purposes of... Money, exactly. He should have never been born. He's useless. Should have never been born, but they're going to give him some extra special treatment in the prison, aren't they? Mm hmm. Can't stand him. Resume. Jackie? Hold on, I'm saying Jackie Williams, and welcome. Didn't DL cry when he realized his sister was gone? And Andrea wouldn't let him use the phone. There was something. You, you, you're heading somewhere. You, are you talking about the interrogation, the second interrogation he had? No, not the second. Well, the first one. Not interrogation. He's not a criminal. Uh, the uh, interview. He had the first interview that they showed him. You talking about that after when she was missing? I think you going there. I think, I think, I think. Let me know. Let me know. All right, let's get back to this Walmart clip of our written record what just happened um the subject went up to the door the defendant went up to the door uh and then now has moved um over to another entrance to try to gain access into the business okay um the um frame that we're playing what is number what is it numbered as two okay now let's jump over to frame four um let's go ahead and set up frame four tell me what we're going to see in frame four um it should be the other entrance to the walmart and eventually show the defendant being able to enter the business okay Where are we at on our counter? 7.04 a.m. Hunter Business School's Career Services Department. subject the defendant just entered the business shortly before 7 5 a.m all right I, I i'm getting a little um, help from my younger assistants assistant here all right and then what time did he enter the store uh, just a little bit before 7 5 a.m all right now we're going to jump over to another um, video segment um is there a segment that will show where he goes in the store um, and makes a selection it does okay what video um um, are we going to be playing as far as the number? Eight. Okay. All right. Where are we at in the store now? Um, just from the view of the video footage, it looks like there's um, cleaning supplies along the left aisle, and then it looks like some clothing on the right of the screen. Um, has Mr. Dinkins come into view yet? Um, he's just now uh, coming into view on the top part of the screen. And he has a cart with him, and he's walking over towards the cleaner section. Okay, what what was the time? Seven oh six. Just look at him, Hawk, pushing that cart through the Walmart, knowing what he did to this girl. You know the question I have. Maybe y'all can help me. I'm just trying to figure out how did he think he was gonna get away with this. You the last person went for. How did he really think he was going to plead not guilty and he was going to get away with it? If anybody knows that, that, that answer, please, or watch the replay. And the second question I have is, too, did he really think by not going to a jury and doing a bench trial with the judge making a decision, things was going to be better? He had more of a chance? See, this is what I'm talking about with these sociopaths. They flipping delusional. They, they, they in a whole nother world. Narcissists, um, hysteronics, borderline personality, psychopaths. Well, psychopaths are a whole nother world. You know what I mean? But it's just, what did you think, Ham Hawk? You thought you were going to get away with this? How did you think you was going to get away with this? There's cameras everywhere, ladies and gentlemen, everywhere. If you don't have a camera for your home, your neighbor has one and across the street. Everybody has cameras. It's all over the place. They don't cost much. They're not expensive. You can get yourself a ni nice high-tech camera for cheap. Don't have to pay much. 
As long as you got some Wi-Fi, they got a cell phone, you at work, you get a ping that somebody's at your door walking around your home, knocking on your door, you know who it is. You can talk through the intercom with them. How did he think he was going to get away with this? That's what I'm curious. But you know what? This is how they all think. All these 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 crazy killers. They always think that they're gonna get away. They think they they can outsmart people. They think they above the law. They think they're better than us. They're smarter than us. No, you're not ham honk. You're not, and you're done. Did this to this poor girl. The fear that she must have had. Oh my gosh. All right, let's resume. What is Mr. Dinkins doing at this point in time? He's placing um, two bottles of Clorox bleach into his cart. What was the size of those bottles of Clorox bleach? 81 ounces each. And were those smaller in sizes compared to the bleach that was found in the apartment of Andrea Culberson? It was the same size. Okay. And did Mr. Ms. Culberson ever describe the defendant bringing any bottles of bleach back to the apartment that day? It was never mentioned in any testimony or any um, interviews that I had with her. All right, now, <clears throat> is there a view of um, the um, a transaction when he purchases those items? There is. Okay, and then um, as far as the video feed that we're going to be playing, what number is assigned to that? 12. Miss KH82, does anyone know when he was initially arrested? Was it immediately after the interview at the police station? I think so. I'm not too sure, but I think so. I really wish I had a good timeline, but um, I think so. Reason. And also, welcome to Donna Just Being Real. Glad to have you here. Where is the purchase made from? Self-checkout. What time are we looking at on our counter right now? Um, it's approaching 7.08 a.m. Today I'll be doing extreme purple with vibrant magenta. For a written record, what is Mr. Dinkins doing? Uh, he has scanned um, one bottle of bleach, uh, but from the receipt, we can tell that he scans it twice to pay for two bottles. And then how does he pay for it? With cash. And is that consistent with what we um, noted on the receipt itself? Yes. Oh my gosh, thank you for sharing. I know this must have been hard for you to share. All right, JJ. I was molested as by a twelve year twelve year old when I was seven. His older thirteen year old brother stopped him. It was a sleepover, me and my little brother and church kids. It affected the rest of your it affects the rest of your life. DL's life is forever changed. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That must have been a lot to share. I'm so sorry to hear that. Woo. Everybody put up some um prayer hands. Prayer hands for um what Jay went through and what DL is gonna go through. And you I definitely agree with you because you can tell what um I did the video on with DL when he was in the court and the look that he was giving his father, you could tell he was angry. He was angry. He has a lot of pent up anger, which is it's it's understandable that he does. And I just hopefully that, you know, this mother, yeah, let's let's show her. Hopefully mom is taking him to therapy, not no one or two sessions, not no three sessions, or grandma, somebody taking him to go and get some therapy. He needs to get therapy at least probably like an hour every day. Because he's going to always, he was close to his sister, and he's going to always feel that 
if I would have just got up, me and my sister would have been alive. Mm -hmm. He needs therapy. But I, I just don't, what I'm seeing here, I just don't see them going, doing therapy. I see uh, one or two sessions. Maybe they'll stick for a month. And after that, they're like, oh, I'm too busy. I'm tired. I can't get him there, whatever. Mm -hmm. And even if he says he doesn't want to go to therapy no more, you still make him go to therapy. That's your son. Make him. Unless if he says he doesn't feel comfortable with that therapist, he wants another therapist, okay, fine. Go and change and get another therapist. Find out with your insurance, your health insurance provider and find another um therapist. That's understandable. He might not feel comfortable with the person he's talking to, but don't stop. All right, let's get back to this Walmart. And then what time in general is he taking the receipt and completing this transaction? I'm almost at 7.09 a.m. Right. <clears throat> Detective Obert, um, we had conducted a review of this footage um, last night for purposes of playing it. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Um, do you recall um, what video segment would show the Chevy Impala passing under camera where it would have picked up DL in the vehicle? Today, for some reason, things don't seem to be working out quite you, right. You would go back to the DPD file. No, sorry, the, go back to the DPD parking lot. Gotcha. Okay, back to Jay. Jake said, I only shared this to point out that we were family friends, known and trusted. See, these women don't hardly know this grown man and let him right in and she's dead. I agree. I agree. I agree. Resume. And then it would be the, um, there's a still shot of it, but then um, it should be. Uh, number eight. Number eight. Okay. Yep. So let's play number eight. And this would be under the file that's been noted DPD parking lot? Yes, this is when he first comes and leaves the business. What is the um, time on our counter here? 6.54 a.m. Has he already left the store that first time when he wasn't able to get in? This is um, now showing the Impala leaving before he could get in the store. And as we look at it, does it show? It shows a passenger, appears to be a uh, black male. Or, um, uh, yeah. All right. After this, is that where we then observed him coming back into the parking lot that second time that you've described? Yeah, at approximately 6.57 a.m. Thank you. Mr. Kinsu. Okay, I'm going to show you another clip. We're going to get into day 11. All right, Jay said to uh, Beautiful Blend, he, he used my molester to search me for years until he found my parents and contacted me by phone, and I froze up, told him not interested, don't contact me again, mess me up. Are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. All right. Oh, my gosh. All right, um, listen to the music while you wait. I'm getting ready to get into, I'm getting ready to get into day 11 clip, ladies and gentlemen. Just give me a second while I, um,
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to focus on day 11. Why are we focused on day 11? Let me look at my notes. All right. Day 11. Oh, yeah. Don't you remember, ladies and gentlemen, there was a witness? And he was the one who helped him pull his truck or with a vehicle out of a, a ditch. Uh-huh. So that witness, but he died. Rest in peace. I think he had a massive heart attack. I'm not too sure. So I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong. But they did talk to the witness as a recording. So we're going to watch that clip. Please, but he's not here no more. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. And I have to say is what he said really puts him upon in that area. Killed that girl. How did you think he was going to get away with this? All right. Let's let's see this ham hop. Just look at him sitting there talking like he's trying to prove his point. What point point you trying to prove? He did it. You know, I have to say, defense attorneys, I know you want to help people out because there's a lot of people out here that's innocent and they're being convicted. There's a lot of people that's in the jailhouse that they didn't do the crime and they, they was convicted and stuff. But stuff like this, when you have so much proof and video cameras and DNA and stuff, I, I just can't defend them, but they have to. You know you're going to lose. Look at him trying to figure out. What are, what are you trying to figure out? What are you trying to figure out? You think you're going to manipulate this court? Typical trying to social figure path. out what's for dinner. Carly Greens and ham hocks. <laughs> he bad. He bad. He, he, he locked him. Can't get he's no He's trying to find out what's for dinner in jail. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen. The lead, lead detective coming in here, cutie pie. I think he's so cute. All right. The um, lead detective is the one who's going to interview him. The um, the witness that seen him at the um, over there at this area. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, may we publish State's Exhibit 123? You may. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not the lead detective. The other guy was lead detective. This ain't the cutie pie I'm talking about. But he interviewed the witness, the one who died. Rest in peace. All right. This is the gentleman that passed away. And he's the one who seen Ham Hawk. Okay. Oh. Uh, before we get started, is it J A R? J E R? J E R? O D? What's your middle name, Jared? Samuel. And then Brinkman. What's your date? Just Brink. Oh, just Brink? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's your date for it, Jared? 11775. Any address for you? 2982 Street. Do it. And your phone number is 468 0641. Yep. Where are you? Where are you? Linwood, Maine. What's that? Linwood, Maine. Right down there. Clinton County, that you had some information that you wanted to share with us. So I just ask that you go through and tell me everything that you can possibly remember from, from this incident. Okay. I need to go south of my house in Homestead until I get to, where the hell it is. I'm going to take that road, they go back to the Coon House. Okay. And then I jump onto the four lane and head south. Okay. So I got, and got on the four lane and went about a half mile around the corner. And a black man jumped out the road in front of me okay. and waved his arms. And I kind of checked there were all the other areas, so I didn't know where he came from. And yeah. I didn't see anybody else, so I stopped. He said he's stuck in a ditch. Huh. And I asked if I could pull him out. 
So he got in my truck. I sat down about another half mile. We turned around to me and come back out. Come back up. Got off of Kuhnau's there and went down in front of Kuhnau's and took a left on the gravel road. Okay. And there I seen his car in the ditch. And it was towards the south end of that pond. It was probably 150 yards off of the blacktop road, the old highway. Okay. So, and his trunk was facing to the kind of, he was skewed just a little bit, probably to the west, northwest a little bit. Okay. He wasn't exactly west. And he dropped the right rear tire. I don't think he dropped the left rear tire off the ground. Or off the edge of the ditch. And uh, I just spun around and backed up to him. I shortchanged my chain in my truck okay. and uh, pulled him out. He wanted to give me 100 bucks. I said, no, I don't need money. Okay. I said, just help somebody else out. Okay. Way we went. But after thinking about it, I'm pretty sure it had a tan color interior and a console in there. Okay. The car was extremely clean inside. Okay. Uh, but it was a tan leather interior. I'm not mistaken, maybe out of moonroof. Okay. But the interior lights were on. And it was like 4 30 in the morning, quarter to five. Um, but he was, I'm pretty sure he was wearing a darker shirt, like a black shirt and white shorts and white shoes. Huh? I just had a hard time seeing him on the highway because all I seen was white shorts yeah. and they're up in the air. Yeah. Trying to figure out what, the hell, still not up. what the hell is that off the road in front of me? Yeah. And the other guy closer, I got to fix it. Okay. But I do remember him. Uh, I asked him what the hell he was doing up here. Yeah. And he said he made a wrong turn. He was coming back from Clinton. I'm almost now. 99%. So and that's pretty much all you're going to bring. I'm likely to try to figure out what the date is. Okay. Or even somewhere close. Okay. Do you remember any of the weather by chance? It was cooler. Okay. And I thought not. Cooler because it was in the morning or cooler because? I think just after the cooler. Okay. Uh, probably around the 40 to 45 degree range. Okay. I'm like, you're a little cold to be out here in shorts. So yeah. I remember thinking that. Okay. Do you remember that it was at, at 4 30 in the morning? It was, yeah, right around there within 15 minutes. Okay. Um, when you said, so you came down from your house. And then headed west past Kuno, yeah. and then got on the four lane yeah. south. Yeah. Okay. And he did not come out until you. You did not see him until you were south on Highway 61. Yeah, he was out on Highway 61. Okay. Probably a half mile south of that intersection. Okay. Um, he got in your truck. You got swung back around. Yeah. Do you remember? Deb, you are so welcome. You're so welcome. And Art, I see you popped up in here. He's pouting. <laughs> I see you are all right resume ladies and gentlemen hairstyle or anything like that I don't, know. I don't remember much just dark hair it was fairly short okay he, um, he was a bigger bigger dude he wasn't fat by no means okay. I mean he looked like he was pretty well stocky stocky okay. but he wasn't fat by no means okay um when he was in your car uh did you smell anything that kind of smelled out of the ordinary no, he smelled like perfume. Smell like perfume? Not perfume. Or or cologne? Cologne type. He's, he ain't stocky. He's a ham. Oh. Like my sneaky truck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you said when he was wearing shorts, right? are you talking about gym shorts or jean shorts? I or? want to say they were like white denim jean shorts. White denim jean shorts? That just sticks in my head. Okay. Any designs on that you can tell? No. Okay. But no, they don't. I don't think they had a flower pat pattern on them or some kind of blue design. For some reason, I see kind of some kind of blue design. Okay. In, in the shorts, like they're screen printed or something. Okay. But um, for some reason, I just got like white jean shorts. Okay. Like the, yeah. And then the t shirt, was it all plain plain black? I don't remember. Just remember being a black t shirt? That was dark. Okay. I don't remember okay. anything about that. And I really wasn't even going to call because the information wasn't that great. And I, that's why I beat my head up and I went to work this morning and I went to my phone, dug and dug and dug, trying to find a text message in case I text somebody that I'd seen them so I can remember the exact date. But I do remember it was probably 4 30 to 4 15 in the morning. Okay. Uh, was he wearing a do rag by chance? Did, do you remember? I don't think so. Okay. Um, when he got back to the car, uh, when I looked at him, I did not suspect anything like of an abnormal person. Okay. I mean, like a do rag, or I think he was wearing a little bit of jewelry, but it wasn't flashy or anything like that. I don't think. Okay. Uh, do you remember the shoes at all? Just white shoes. Maybe white shoes. I guess. Before I, I get up, I make my coffee, I get dressed up. <laughs> that was probably literally from the time I got up to there, 20, 25 minutes. Okay, from still, still sleepy head. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I didn't know enough to kind of look around and stuff before I even bother to stop to see if there's anything else going on yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Like stuff and going food. No, absolutely. Um, so after you pick him up and circle back around, did you take that first right when you turned onto that uh, gravel road in front of Kuna? So did you, go, did you go in front of Kuna or did you go swing back around Kuna? In front of Kuna. Okay, and then you took the left to come back around. Um, Meeb, Meeb, I'm, I hope I'm saying it right. If I'm saying it wrong, I apologize for butchering up. Uh, 
In my opinion, the mess opportunity, the miss opportunity was with Andrea to check him when she seen her outside standing by the car at 3 a.m. That's all she had to do. That's all she had to do. But she didn't do it. She didn't do it. Ooh, burns me up. Resume. And then there's, you said there, the entrance to the pond. There's an entrance to the pond on the north side, I think. A little gravel entrance. Okay. It was probably 75 to 100 yards south of there. Okay. Okay. Um, I drove by this morning, and I'm like, yep, it was probably within 20 foot either direction right here is where I pulled them out. Okay. So I remember there's, so there's, there's two entrances. One looks like one where like side by side your ATVs go up, and the other looks like where a car would go down. Yeah, one the car went down would probably be on the north side. Yeah. Yeah. So he was on the one where the ATVs? No, he just dropped off the ditch, and I didn't look real close, but okay. I did walk around the side of his car, and I just seen the one tire was dropped off. Okay. And he had spun down into the gravel while he was trying to get out. But I think that's why I seen the interior of the car. Okay. The color of it. And the interior, what color What color was the car? I'm most positive it was maroon. Maroon. And the make and model? I'm pretty sure it was a maroon. Uh, I can guarantee it was an Impala. Okay. I guarantee it's an Impala. Uh, I'll guarantee okay. For some reason, there's a charcoal gray, but for some reason, it's maroon. Okay. And my buddy was asking that. Because when I was out last night, he, uh, I said, you know what's weird about them putting that body up there or whatever? I said, last, last fall, I said, I can't remember the date. I said, I pulled up. So I said, Mel, no, I'm like, no, it was an Impel. He said, what color was it? I said, it was maroon. I mean, I, now you're thinking about it. And I have not seen that flyer because I don't watch the news and I don't I go around anywhere. So you didn't really know anything? About what, what's been going on for the past eight months. I had no previous uh, viewing of any of that stuff. Okay. You know, I heard about things. Possibly they were looking in the clear right after first happened, and that's the only thing I heard. Okay. Um, so that flyer that his wife sent me when he showed it to me, that was the first time I ever. First time you ever seen the car? Yeah. Oh, I, I, and on a fine printed or in the news? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had never seen that. Okay. Um, did you touch his car at all? You know, or did you I just... probably couldn't. I hooked the chain up on the right front. On the right front, right front tire? No, I, there's a little hole in the frame. Okay. Right in front of the lower control arm. Okay. I could real easily put my hand on the hood, and it probably would have been my right hand, and I reached underneath on the cradle okay. and hooked it up. Okay. Or I hooked the side, or touched the side of the fender with my left hand when I was getting up one of the two. Okay. Um, the other car? No. no. Um, I would like just walk by the, the right side of that car right now, and that would probably refresh so much of my memory. Yeah. yeah. Was there, there was no one else in the car, or was there someone else in the truck? No. Okay. And no, I don't think there was even anything on the seats or anything. There was a wax cord for a phone, blood cigarette lighter, but that car. Okay. Um, and no, did you ever open the door or anything like that? Did you pull a little bit and pull the brake in here? Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you ask him if he had called anybody for any help or anything like that? No. And the only thing that he said was that he was on his way from Clinton to Davenport, but ended up 15 miles, or five, five, five miles north of it. Five miles north of it. Okay. Have you ever seen a lot of people back in that area? I agree with you. I definitely know this ham hop been putting his hands on her. He puts his hands on a lot of women. He's that type of dude. He think, he think he's all that. Putting his hands on them, controlling them, manipulating them, using them. Mm, mm, mm. Why, why, ladies? We have to do better. You got to give self-esteem. Get self-esteem. Love yourself. Don't deal with some piece of crap like this. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. At the end, all you're going to get is heartbreak and embarrassment. It's just not worth it. Mm -mm. Reason. Maybe during the day, kids messing around or something like that. But yeah, and I don't ever take tag around the road because the other one, I'm, I'm straight on. There's no stop sign and it just skirts around. Okay. The only reason why I went on the road and tried to I picked him up. Okay. Um, when after you pulled him out and you were leaving, did you see which direction he went? Do you remember? Yeah. Did he follow you to that point? <laughs> you would, would you have been heading north if you pulled them out, or were you heading back south? I had, on the no, ground, I south, south on the ground. I went past where I could have also got back on the floor. Okay. Um, 
And even she, was he still there when you left? No, I'm pretty sure he pulled, after I hooked the chain, he went, again, wanted to pay me for it. Yeah. And I distinctly remember him, I'll give you a hundred bucks, I'll give you a hundred bucks. He said that a million times. And then after I hooked the chain, he's like, here, here. He went to him, and I was like, no, I don't need money. Okay. okay. But don't remember which way he left from there? No, I'm pretty sure. He, I know he followed me. Okay. I'll follow you out to the stop sign. Which way you went off of that? I, okay. Um, okay. I'm trying to think of anything else. Then he your business card or something. If I remember anything. And, but like I said, I went to work. I told everybody I never hit the guy on the road. Yeah. So he just, here, just, just jumped out and right ran out in front of you? No, he was on the edge of the road. You know, he was definitely on the white line or maybe on foot. Yeah. On the inside of it, or it'd be yellow over there. Okay. But he wanted me to stop. You know. And he was acting completely normal? Completely normal. Okay. I mean, he seemed to be very, fairly well spoken. It didn't seem like a bunch of slang or anything like that. You know, I'm very appreciative. And he didn't seem like he was. Like, oh man, you gotta help me. He's done his body off. And yeah. It didn't seem like a person would have to have yeah. a frantic stage or anything like that. So, you, so the way his car was, he would have had to pull down around that tree and then was heading back out of that area. I think he might have pulled forward towards the tree on the east side of the road and went back up. Okay. And then he dropped his tire off, the right rear tire off on the west side of the road. Okay. Because if I'm not mistaken, he was skewed just a little bit. He wasn't quite perpendicular. So his, his trunk was then, was his trunk was facing the pond? He was facing west. Okay. So he would have been facing the pond? Yes. Okay. So he would have had it backed up into that area? Yeah. And then, okay, he was trying to... Maybe I'll have to see his field drive there. I, so you, with, his, with winter time there, the snow plows would have pushed no, the yeah. gravel over it, but you would have seen his tire print on the side of the road before he pulled it out. Even now, it's, it had not been winter. Yeah. Because I'm sure he pulled it at the side of the road. Yeah. You know, coming to the side of the road and popped up, you would have seen it. Okay. But, okay. Um, was he was he dry? Were his clothes dry? Or was he wet or anything like that? He was dry. He was dry. Okay. And just smelled of the, the, an abundance of cologne? Meeb, I agree with you. She didn't know this man at all. One or two years, people are still in a representative character. I agree. Mm-hmm. And she had a baby by him. Just met this guy. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. She just had a baby. She met Ham Hawk. The mother met Ham Hawk, and she just had Bree, and Bree was a couple of months old. Then she meets Ham Hawk, and then she goes again and have another baby. And she was 18 when she met Ham Hawk. And she already had two kids. This is something else. Oh, my Lord. All right, resume. No. Like somebody that was fairly neat and yeah. clean cap. You didn't see like, like scuzzy, dirty, or anything like yeah. that. Remember, she was being dirty at all or muddy at all or anything like that? I don't think so. Okay. Um, He wanted to give you a hundred, but was he trying to actually hand you the money? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you were to see this guy again, would you be able to recognize him if he came out? Boy, I don't know. I only know the best way to do it. If you put two of them there, I'm not sure how you pick them out. And if you put six of them there, you know, it, I, I don't know. If you put two guys side by side, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Maybe. Probably I was thinking about that before either. You know, you started to show me pictures. I think, real honestly, it'd be best to put six out first instead of two. Yeah. Because, like I said, he, he, didn't, he wasn't fat. He was seemed like he was very well built. And if you look at the picture, and I don't even want to look at the pictures because I don't want to corrupt my thoughts. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't look at that. I wouldn't look at any pictures. Well, please. Okay, so this is kind of the area of your house and then Puno. So I just want to make sure I got this right. So you came down. So I love my house. Come yeah. down here. The railroad. No. So you drove, drove right on the north side of Kuhnhoff. Yeah, and I probably picked him up right here. Okay. And he, that's where I picked him up, which was pretty much straight across the gravel. So he yeah. walked right across here to the four lane. And okay. I probably came down here, turned around, went back in front of Kuhnhoff, pulled him off. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, he was somewhere probably right in. Well, he's towards the south side of the trees. I don't think there was, I was right on the edge of the trees on the east side of the road. Okay. Probably up, probably 20 foot from there. Okay, so he wasn't near that entrance to no, the to circle drive at all. He was down the road further. He was down, down here. I was pretty much straight even with the trees on the east side of the road when I was pulling them out. Okay, that makes a lot more sense then. Okay. Um, so then you just pulled me back in and then pulled them out this way and then went back to 61 and took off. Okay. Uh, this is actually just a, I don't know if this is, this one's a little bit better. So you picked him up further down here? Yeah. Yeah. 
we'll put on there. And then so right or circle right where you believe him, or where, where do you think he was at? Boy. It makes it look a little different. It'd be easier on the, if I stand in the room. I'm going to say somewhere between here and here. Okay. On the room. And he was backed in, so his truck, the truck would have been facing that way. Yes. Okay. Was the trunk open at all? No. Okay. Okay. No, I would. I probably wouldn't be here if I didn't have any coordination with that girl missing. No. Um, so, I mean, did you, obviously, you said that you hadn't known about anything that was involved in the disappearance of that girl at all? Well, I did know a little bit when it first happened. Yeah. They're still looking for him to do that. But okay. You didn't know of any involved people or any involved vehicles or anything like that? I mean, first time I talked about room card was last night after my buddy was pumping me. Kind of Ma, hold on deck. I see you strong. It's okay. It's okay. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Resume. I come right out to so. Yeah. So what was he asking you? He's just like, I pulled her sitting there having a beer, and I'm like, you know what's weird about them finding that body over there? I pulled the car out there. Like, so you brought it up? Yeah, I brought it up. I said, you know what's weird about it is I pulled a car out of the ditch last fall. Mm -hmm. And he, he's like, what kind of car was it? And at first, I'm like, Malibu? No, I said it was an Impella. He said, what color was it? And I said, it was maroon. He's like, oh my God. He said, you don't know the maroon Impella? And I said, no, what? what? Well, that's that girl that's missing. That's mm -hmm. just speculating that's that car. Mm -hmm. And he called his wife, and his wife sent me the text message. Okay. Of that flyer, of the flyer, flyer with the car on there, and two guys on the bottom, and her picture. Yep. Actually, thank you. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, I think it's back there. Right here. Right here, right here. Oh, you already had that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's this. This one. Oh, yeah. Um, there's my card. You have that right now. Do you, what time do you have to be at work? Whenever you want. Basically, I'm there by five. Quarter after five. Okay, so you're there by five every morning? Yeah, by quarter after. Yeah. What, so what time do you usually leave your house? I don't know. 4.30. 4.30, okay. Um, is, who, do you have a direct supervisor that we just verify? Because we're trying to create the time. Okay, Melvia, and safe travel, safe travels, girl, and blessings to you, Melvia. Line of, of events that happened on that day, so we just kind of want to verify. Obviously, you're probably a little late on that day. Uh, yeah, you have to stop and pull them out. And I'm a supervisor, so I can come and go. As it oh, okay. Just like now, I just just left. Okay. So, <laughs> so, do you see? Do you report to anybody? Yeah, I, uh, Mark Clemick, he's my boss. Mark Clemick. Yeah. How do you know that's from Clemick? <laughs> I'm guessing it's like K L E M I G. Oh, I'm in here. Uh, K L I M E K. M E K. Okay. Anyway, his phone number. Yeah, that'd be great. Five six three. Yep. Three four zero. Five two two eight. Five two two eight. And the guy you were talking to last night having a beer that you were talking with. What's his name? Joe Adams. Joe Adams. Yeah. Do you have his phone number by chance? Oh, he's going to go off the deep end. <laughs> what did you get my phone number for? I'm like, you're the one that told me how to go off. He's not in any trouble, that's for sure. 212 9230. That flyer that he got sent, can I see which, what, what flyer that is? 
I know I didn't put out a couple different ones. Good boy, it's not good after one. Okay. So what did you see when you saw that? He showed me on his phone. My phone was in the truck. He showed me on his phone. Okay. I just looked at it as he handed me like this. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's the car. I okay. looked at the pictures. And I'm pretty sure it's not that one. And if this guy lost weight, I could possibly say it was him. Okay. And so as soon as you saw that that car, you're like, that, that was the first time you saw that car since you pulled it out of the ditch? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I got the chain at home. I'm pretty sure, depending upon where the record hooked up, I could see exactly where it hooked up to it. Okay. I mean, just in front of the right front wheel, there's a T-slot. I used to remote guard, so I okay. know there's a T-slot where you look into. So I, okay. And I didn't hook up on the right front of the car. And it was a pretty short chain. It was probably only 60 months. So I was pretty close to the car okay. when I backed up to it because I knew that's all I had. Okay. Um, so there's a couple other things that I'm going to ask of you to help us further this investigation. Okay. Um, I'd like to take you down and show you the car, uh, the Maroon Paw. Then I'd also like to take you back out to Kunau so you can specifically show us where you pulled him out. Yeah. yeah, today. <laughs> yeah, today. So, oh, no, that's no big deal. Okay. And while we're doing that, um, we'd like to forensically download your phone just because our like, our computers have more capability of pulling stuff out that you may or may not have deleted and not know about. Oh, I don't believe it. Okay. Just recently, I started deleting text messages. Um, we'd like to just do that for our records going forward. So you'd be able to pull the GPS on my phone when I turn around. Yeah, we'd be able to pull stuff like I that. Can't, can't believe you couldn't come up with the GPS if I. Anybody's phone in there. Yeah. So so you'd be able to come up with the data. Yeah. But when I turned around, because I know exactly which route I took. Yeah. And that's kind of why we want to take you up there, so you can like specifically show us like where you picked them up at, where you pulled where you pulled the car out at, and all that stuff. And while we're when doing, you want to go up there, like right now. We leave from here like right, right now. Oh, I can say because if yeah, we did a couple hours later, I just stay home. <laughs> right. We I, we would take you up there and bring you right back. So. Okay. And then while we're doing while we're going down and showing you the car and then taking you up there, we'd have. Um, our guy download your phone real quick so it'll be done when we get back. Oh, I can't take that my phone. That's just for work. Yeah. How long does it take down? It all depends on how much you have on your phone. Yeah, might take a little bit then. So they don't sense of taking my wife's movie pictures off of it. <laughs> we're, not, we're not in it for that. <laughs> Trust me. I'm sure you can find another one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're not in it for that. So uh, I can leave my phone with him right now and we can run down to the car quick. Yeah. Um, is there a password on your phone? Yeah. What's the password? Uh, 1233. 1233. Okay. Right. Uh, hang out. I have to go get. Um, someone's going to come with me because they're going to be two of us that go, and then we'll get this moving, and I'll take it down to the car, get this done, or with, hopefully have you out of here by 12 o'clock. Yeah, it should take it down. All right. All right. Thanks, Dr. Mitchell. Possible shorts. See if those jogging memory at all. Mm -hmm. What? I told you, wait with blue on them. Yep. Did those I, are the shorts? Yes. I'm pretty sure. I, I don't recall them shoes, though. Okay. But like I said, I already told you before, I don't know the shoes. But yeah. I said white shorts with possibly blue screen print. Yep. Like some kind of design. Yep. So I'm not sure I remember a tank top, but. Okay. Yeah. But those shorts are pretty certain. I'd like, I never seen the backside of like, yeah. Like, I don't remember him being that. Vaguely built. Like okay. I said, he was big, but I don't think he was like portly. Big. Yeah. I mean, it's, he looked like he had a big frame. Okay. But I do, like I said, I, do, I yeah. do remember possibly some kind of blue screen right now. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to be too far off. No, not at all. I'm going to keep working out here, right? All right. So you think you know which. I see you, Nikki. I'm sorry and say nothing. I didn't see you commenting and bless it to you, girl. Mod on deck.
I'd like to direct your attention to the, that portion of the conversation where you were having Mr. Brink identify um, locations um, where, where um, first of all, he had that initial contact with this black gentleman along Highway 61. Um, does that give us a good perspective there or would another map give us a better perspective? That gives a fairly good perspective um, of the route that he took, yeah. All right, go ahead and show us on State's Exhibit 38. Sure, oh, perfect, yes. All right, so go ahead and show us again. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so lost with the comments. I don't know what happened. But I apologize if I didn't show your comment or didn't read your comment and everything. And I'm greeting everybody who's coming here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and opinions because it helps for us all. You know, everybody here to get, you know, share your thoughts and get clarity of things because this is, this is crazy. But one thing I have to say that we all agree on, this child was not put first and she was not protected. That's one thing we can all agree with here. There's so many things that could have been done to prevent this little girl from being deceased right now. He took away her life. He took away her from going to a graduation, to a prom, having her first boyfriend, you know, going to college, getting married, doing whatever she wanted to do. And she had all rights to, and he snatched it away from her. Who the heck does he think he is? But people around him, around her, didn't protect her and didn't put her first. They basically threw her to the wolves by the monster of the name of Ham Hawk Deacons. Yep. He's not even a wolf, more like a feral hog. Yeah, just look at him. You think he's I mean, fine. Just, just it, it, look it at this. Screams chitlins and, it, it screams chitlins. Can't stand him. And I'm sorry, y'all, if I missed the, the comments. I don't know where the heck I was at. Oh, boy. Shoot, do, 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 do. Let me read the um votes real quick. Let's see what we got now. We have 203 votes. What do you think the judge verdict will be? Donna, guilty, 86%. Not sure, 8%. Not guilty, 6%. All right, let's get back into this. Oh, movie. who was the six percent? I don't know. I mean, people, we have the right to vote what they want. I don't know, man. <laughs> Y'all six percent probably the ones that be looking at kids. Mm -hmm. Reason. Okay, thank you. When Mr. Umbrink had referenced going down um, a half mile further after he had picked up the black gentleman and having turned around at the median, is there medians along Highway 61 where you can utilize that and to head back north? Yes. And was that your understanding of what he was explaining? Yes, it was. All right. Now, let's go to state Utilizing this particular aerial map, can you go back to the area of 270th Avenue and help us understand where he was locating that um, vehicle, the Maroon Chevy Impala, along that roadway when they oh, came down there? Oh, second, uh, yes. pause it. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Speak. Pause it. I'm reading the comment section. Jacqueline Wall stated, I had an Apollo like that, and you telling me you can't fit three kids in that devil? You can fit five kids up in that Apollo. In the 1990s model, you could fit about six of them, them kids up in there. And you had a big trunk. You know they had some of us you know, ride in the trunk, you know, the trunk door be open and I'll let it be hanging out. No, I'm I'm serious, real talk. I, I know what they talking about. Real mm -hmm. talk, you know, or they had a truck and all of us, they talking about, oh, oh, we only can fit two people in the truck. No, the rest of us be in the back of the truck bed. 
We'll be in the truck bed, be going on the highway, 60 miles an hour. We'll just be sitting up there or laying up in there or doing something crazy. Shoot. Talking about you can't fit no more kids up in there. And that's that's an impala. You can fit about four or five kids up in this thing. Comfortably. I agree. I agree with you. I'm gonna have to go down this call because I think I'm repeating comments. All right, let's let's get back to it. We're gonna hang in there for a little bit longer because tomorrow we'll see. So tomorrow's supposed to be. I'm assuming tomorrow's gonna be the verdict. So we're gonna focus on the verdict. So I'll do hold something. On, hold on, time. hold on, hold on. Nita said he probably meant not fitting three kids in that small bed. It looked like a queen's full size bed. What you got pallets for? What you talking about? That's what you got bed pallets for. Mm. I mean, kids sleep on the floor. We slept on the floor. Our grandma mm. house had a whole bunch of cousins, had about 15 or 20 of them. We know we bad as you know what. Uh they had, we, you know, the girls slept on the beds and the boys slept on the floor. We talking about. You know, we slept on the floor. We had pallets. They had they had what's called pallets. You know, you put the blanket, uh, you know, like a little blanket or quilt, or whatever, over, and then you had some sheets or whatever, and you just lay there, you know, kind of like a, a, a sleeping bag. Basically. I mean, that, you know, you're talking about you can't fit three kids in that small bed. You only fit three kids in that small bed. Let the girl have the bed and the boys be on the on the floor with the pallet. What you talking about? Well said. Let, let me read this one. Yes, I I might be pronouncing wrong. I'm sorry I missed your comment before. Another thing is it was in the midst of the COVID. Those kids shouldn't have never gone with that monster. The girlfriend should have called 911. That's another thing to think about. Why are these kids all over the place and there's a miss of it? Mm-hmm. Something to think about. Mm -hmm. And caught on camera, I didn't see you too. Blessings to you because they proved that she knew or did anything. I don't know which one you're talking about, that comment. All right, let's get back in that. All right, let me read this one. Jay said, oh, wait a minute. All right, let's, let's get back to it, ladies and gentlemen. All right. For purposes of our written record, relative to the um, access road, and that would be that steep access road that would take you to the pond, um, would that have placed him um, uh, further north or further south? South or was it across to 70th? During your conversation with Mr. Brink, was there any discussion about how it appeared the gentleman was trying to do a three-point turn when he got stuck? Okay, all right. And then so as for um, and the portion of the vehicle that got stuck off of the roadway, um, uh, help us understand what he was describing there. Uh, the equipment back up here, they were doing a backpack tire, and off the ground for a reason, uh, moving okay, Go ahead and take your seat. Detective Johnson, um, on July 9th, um, in the evening of 2020, was there a significant rainstorm here in the Davenport area? I believe so, yes. And then um, even um, when we had gone up there to recover the body, um, had the weather been fairly inclement during, um, uh, well, no, I, I, I take that back, okay. So had the weather been fairly inclement through the evening of July 9th and going to the early morning hours of July 10th? I believe so, yes. Um, when you oh, were no. there at the time that um, Briege's skeletal remains were recovered, what is it that you I'm looking at Miss Toy's comment. She stated another suspicious thing was he kept taking the battery out of his phone. Oh yes, the brother. Um, the brother. What am I saying, bro? I'm sorry. The son. Let's let's look at the son right here. See this evil look he gave his father when he walked in that courtroom. I did um commentary. You can look on that one, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 
And the brother testified, I'm the brother, I can't say brother, I'm sorry. The son, DL, testified that he did say that um, he took my, that was when they was at the Walmart, if I'm correct, they was at the Walmart. When he went to the Walmart to go and buy the bleach, the mm-hmm. son put the battery back in because he wanted to play games. Thank God he oh. did because that helped the ping where he was located. So when he saw, he his, also he, saw he did that to take the bear out to, to not to not trace his location. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and um, he'll he'll correct he'll correct criminal. Denethia, I hope I might be saying wrong. I'm just say Jones. Remember, he lied to her about his age when they first met. Yeah, but he lied about twenty years. You can't tell. You- I mean, a person can lie to me about three, four years if they lucky, but 20 years? She had to know that dude was way older. I'm sorry. Mm-mm. Yeah. What I are you going to say, Jay? He probably, he probably took not only probably not the, the father's location, he probably took the bad out of the phone and want people being those and know he may have been searching on some stuff he ain't got no business searching. That's true. Got a point. Mm-hmm. The kids were in the bedroom the bedroom bed. So when did she switch beds with the little boy in order to see her in the window outside of the car at three? Ooh, something to think about. This whole thing just doesn't add up. This is too many lies. All right, resume. She well, I need to have to ask you that. I'm gonna backtrack. Did you drive up there with Mr. Um, Brink on? Um, uh, March 24th. Is that when you met with him? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, describe what happened when you drove up there on March 24th with Mr. Brink. Uh, Mr. Brink was able to describe um, a lo- the location of what. Welcome, Pat. Great question. Why would a man buy two bottles of bleach at three o'clock in the morning if he's not up to no good? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. That kind of reminds me of the man in Knox case, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Buying bleach five thirty in the morning. How did he think he? <laughs> oh, reason. Well, where he remembers pulling out the maroon and hollow. Okay. Now, did you have a chance to look at the shoulder um, along the area of 270th Avenue? Yes, I did. How would you describe the shoulder relative to the traveled roadway? Uh, there's probably about, it's very short, narrow, uh, and then there's probably about a, I would say, a foot, foot and a half drop off from the gravel to the um, edge of the road. Is that distinctly different from what we typically see if we're driving along the highway and we see just a flat level surface that would um, constitute the shoulder in a lot of instances? Yes. And so having been up there and viewed that, um, was it um, easy to understand how a vehicle that backed off the roadway could get easily stuck? Yes, it is. Were you aware of the search warrant that had been obtained for the um, Maroon Chevy Impala to drop the gas tank and determine how much gas was left in the tank? Yes, I was. Um, And how were you familiar with that circumstance? I believe I authored that search warrant. Certainly. And then by virtue of the car being placed up on a lift, um, were you um, uh, um, aware of um, additional findings that were made up underneath um, the vehicle itself within the frame of the vehicle? I believe uh, I was made aware of possibly some soil that they had been located there. Okay. And were those soil samples collected? Yes, they were. Name is Darren Butler. Now, there was something specifically that Mr. Brink mentioned seeing when he looked into the Maroon Chevy Impala. What was it he described seeing? It was a white aux cord that was plugged into a cigarette lighter. What is an aux cord? Uh, it's a phone that, or it's a cord that you can plug into your car and then uh, plug in your phone to play music. All right. Additionally, um, uh, when Mr. Brink was talking with you about this black gentleman um, offering him $100 for pulling him out, in your conversation with him, um, did Mr. Brink speak to the man actually trying to hand him money? Yeah, he stated on numerous occasions the man attempted to hand him $100 in money. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Or Yes, well, first of all, let the record reflect that I'm going to show counsel what's been marked as states exhibits 104-1 through 104-3. <laughs> Hold on a second for a second. Um, I guess somebody had an inquiry about uh, prison. Uh, Julie Porter states in the UK, SOs, which are sex, you know what, 
are held separate from normal prisoners. It's the same in the U.S. here. It's called Section 42, I believe. Uh, no, I mean, you know, they do put them in protective custody, but, you know, a GP can turn a PC just to get to it. I mean, that's there's ways around to get to them, get to a, a, a SO. Yeah, because the first time you go in there, you hit the yard, uh, they run your paperwork. The people... People in the prison run your paperwork and they run your name through Megan's Law and they find out your paperwork. And if you're bad, you know, you can ring the bell and get PC. But again, there's people who want to get to somebody, they'll tend to go to PC just to get to you and then get back out in general population when they get done. So, I mean, there's not a lot of escape for SO. Yes, I do. How do you recognize that group exhibit? These are the uh, photographs that I showed Mr. Brink during our interview. 104-1. What specifically is that exhibit? Uh, that is showing his residence compared to where Kunau is and where he picked up the gentleman. 104-2. That's a close-up of the area around Kunau um, where he marked where the vehicle that he pulled out of the ditch was. 104-3. That is a picture of Mr. Dinkins leaving uh, a store at 3.30 in the morning. Would that be the quick shop where video surveillance footage was collected after he left the apartment complex at 3.30 a.m.? Yes, it would be. All right. Um, and does 104-1 and 104-2 um, have markings um, on it to indicate locations that were being talked about specifically um, as it relates to the room Chevy Impala? Yes, I do. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move to introduce states exhibit 104-1 through 104-3. No objection. Those exhibits will be admitted. May I publish, Your Honor? You may. Give me a moment here. Now, as we look at States Exhibit 104-1, to the left side of the diagram, and if you could use your pointer that you have right behind you, um, is Highway 61 shown on this aerial map? Yes, it is. It's right down here where it says the Vineyard and Winery. Okay. And does it have the highway insignia listed in <coughs> number 61? Yes, it does. All right. Now, can you show us on this map what would constitute the area of Kunau implements, specifically where you would turn off Highway 61 on the 212. Kunau is located right here at 212, uh, right above where this X is. There's been a description for the parcel of land that Kunau is located on, and it was described as essentially a pie-shaped piece of property. Would that be an apt description? Correct, that would. All right, so if you could, then show us what is 212, that becomes 210th, show us 270th, and then show us 218th, or what would be old Highway 61. This whole area would be right through here. Okay, which of those paved roads is 212? It would be the road to the north here. Which is 270th? 270th is, I believe, this one that goes north and south behind Kuno. And which is 218th, or what a lot of people would recognize as the old Highway 61? It would be this road coming straight down here. All right. Um, are there any markings that were placed on this map as we look at it? Yes, there is. And then can you show us where those markings are located at? The first marking uh, up here in the upper right-hand corner. That would be where Mr. Brink lives. And then this marking down here just south of Kunau would be right about where Mr. Brink said that he picked up the mail. All right. As to our written record, um, have you put some type of um, red dot on the map with Mr. Brink's address? Yes, I have. What is that address that's listed? 2918 182nd Street in DeWitt, Iowa. And then the second marking, was um, uh, that something that you imprinted or was it something that was placed on it by a pen? It was placed on by a pen. Okay, and so how has that location where the vehicle was across the roadway, roadway marked on State's Exhibit 104-1? Uh, with an X right here on the bottom of the picture. Let's go to State's Exhibit 104-2. In this particular aerial image, um, have you zoomed in so that we've got a better perspective of Highway 61 in the area of Kunau implement? Yes, we do. All right. Now, are there any markings on this particular exhibit? Yes, there are two. 
Explain. The first one would be where Mr. Brink picked up the mail. And then these markings right here on 270th Avenue would have been where he said that he pulled the vehicle out of the ditch. Thank you. And then finally, going to State's Exhibit 104-3, describe what we have in this exhibit. This would be Mr. Dinkins leaving the quick shop, uh, wearing the white shorts with the blue pattern on them. All right. Are these the shorts that Mr. Brink had indicated um, were like the shorts that we observed the black gentleman wearing? Yes, it is. This particular image, the activity encompassed within it, what date did it happen? July 10th of 2020. Um, and was that after 3.30 a.m. when Mr. Stinkins left the Jersey Meadow apartment complex and would have arrived at the quick shop at 3.32 a.m.? Yes. Was it your understanding that he actually had gone into the quick shop and made a purchase? Yes, it is. And then so is that um, a still image taken from that video surveillance camera which documented what he wore? Yes, it is. With Mr. Brink's clothing description of the black gentleman that he picked up and pulled um, off, you know, out of the ditch on the area of 270th Avenue, does that then help to establish a date for when he would have had contact with a black gentleman up there in the area of Kunao Implement? Yes, it does. All right. There's been testimony offered by Special Agent Richard Fenneran. Um, uh, do you know in the course of the investigation whether or not the cell phone that you um, had collected from Mr. Brink, um, uh, the GPS location information, was that analyzed by Special Agent Fenneran to see if the phone um, uh, was hitting cell towers in the area of Kunal, Kunal Implement on July 10th at 430 a.m.? Yes, I believe it was. Okay, thank you. All right, um, I'd like to approach um, and show you an additional exhibit. Your Honor, may the record reflect that I'm showing counsel what's marked as State's Exhibit 105. May I approach? You may. Okay. I'm showing you what's previously been introduced as State's Exhibit 105. Do you recognize State's Exhibit 105? Yes, I do. During the interview, um, Mr. Brink had shown you an image on his cell phone. What was within that image? Uh, that image contained as one of the flyers that we had put out during uh, this investigation. It contained a uh, picture of Briege Trail, um, the three involved vehicles, and then I believe there was a couple pictures of Henry Dinkin Dine. Okay. Now, in State's Exhibit 105, I would represent to you that we have removed um, any of the written information relative to that flyer that was put out. But the photographs depicted in the lower portion of State's Exhibit 105 were those the photographs that were in that captured image you saw, saw on Mr. Dinkins phone. Yes, I believe it is. Um, how many vehicles are depicted? There are three. Um, does, does that include the maroon Chevy? Of the three images, where's the maroon Chevy Impala located? It's the middle vehicle on the bottom row. So those vehicles just to bring middle vehicle on the bottom row. Your Honor, may I publish this image? You may. And if I take that photo, I want you to look at Mr. <coughs> um, and around the area of his nose. Do you notice any type of mole in the photographs for Mr. Deacons? Yes, I do. Describe. Uh, it looks like he has a mole, which would be, uh, I believe, on the right-hand side of his face. Where is it located relative to his nose? Very close, within centimeters of his nostrils. May I publish your honor? You may. As we look at State's Exhibit 105, Where's the maroon Chevy Impala? It's located here, the bottom, the middle vehicle in the bottom row. And as you look at the photographs of Mr. Deacons, um, do we see the mole that I've asked you about? Yes, we do. Can you show us where that mole is at? Uh, the middle picture, it's located right here. The far right picture, I believe it's right there. And then very faintly, you could probably see it right there in this last picture. Mr. Deacons mentioned, or Mr. I should say Deacons, Mr. Brink mentioned during his deposition that the black gentleman had a mole um, on the right side of his face by his nose. Is that consistent with what we see in the photograph? Yes, it is. After um, you finished your conversations with Mr. Brink there in the interview room, describe then what your activity consisted of. Uh, after we were done with the interview, we took him to um, Service South where we store vehicles. Uh, we showed him the vehicle of the Maroon Impala down there. He confirmed that was the vehicle that he had pulled out of the ditch. Um, after we left there, we drove him up to Kunal to 
let him tell us where he pulled the vehicle out and where he was, where he picked up the man at. Okay. And did that um, correlate with what you have noted in our state's exhibit? What was it? 140? Was it 143? Yeah. Our state's exhibit 104? Yes. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, may the record reflect that I'm showing counsel what's been um, previously introduced as state's exhibit 1 1 through 1 11 and then 1 19 through 1 20. <coughs> if you're tired of spending a ton on all your streaming services, Exhibit 1-11 through 1-11, uh, look through those and tell me generally what the picture is in those photographs. These are photographs of the exterior of the Maroon Chevy Impala. States Exhibit 1-19 through 1-20. These are images of the interior front passenger compartment or front seat compartment of the Maroon Chevy Impala. Of the photographs that you're looking through, does it show images of every perspective of the exterior of that maroon Chevy Impala. Yes, it does. And does it also show us the white ox cord that Mr. Um, Brink had mentioned to you? Yes, it does. Um, his description of there being a tan interior with there being a center console, is that consistent with what we see in this vehicle? That'd be correct. Your Honor, may I publish this again? You may. Detective Johnson, State's Exhibit 1-1, just briefly for our record, what are we seeing here? This is the ID card uh, displaying the case name and reason for the call. State's Exhibit 1-2. That would be the rear driver's side of the Maroon Chevy Impala. Do you see any dents on this portion of the vehicle? No, I do not. State's Exhibit 1-3. would be the rear passenger side and angle of the Maroon Chevy Impala. Do you see any dents in no, this I, area? No, I do not. State's Exhibit 1-4. That'd be the front angle showing down the passenger side of the Maroon Chevy Impala. Do you see any dents in this area of the vehicle? No, I do not. States Exhibit 1-5. The front view going down the driver's side of the vehicle. Do you see any dents in this area of the vehicle? No, I do not. States Exhibit 1-6. That's the head-on view from the front of the vehicle. Do you see any dents in this area of the vehicle? No, I do not. States Exhibit 1-7. Be the driver's side of the vehicle. Do you see any dents in this area of the vehicle? No, I do not. States Exhibit 1 8. Be the front, uh, the rear passenger, rear driver's side of the vehicle. Do you see any dents in this area of the vehicle? No, I do not. States Exhibit 1 9. That's the rear of the vehicle. Do you see any dents in this area of the vehicle? No, I do not. States Exhibit 1 10. That is the rear passenger side of the Impala. And are we getting more close up perspectives around the um, wheel well? Um, areas of the vehicle? Yes, we are. You seeing any dents in this area of the vehicle? No, I'm not. States Exhibit 111. That's the front passenger side of the vehicle. And in this close up perspective, are you seeing any dents on, on this vehicle? No, I'm not. Okay. Now I want to go to States Exhibit 119 1. The white ox cord that Mr. Brink mentioned, can you see that in this photograph? Yes, I can. Can you take the pointer and show us? It is located right here in front of the, on the floorboard of the driver's seat. States Exhibit 1-20. Is this a better perspective of that white ox cord? Yes, it is. Can you show us with the pointer? Let's see right here. Thank you. What was the name of Mr. Brink's employer? Linwood Mining. And then did he give you the name of his supervisor? Yes, he did. What was the name of the supervisor? Mark Klemick. Why were you interested in collecting Mr. Klemick's name? Uh, we wanted to verify what time he may have been at work um, on that day. Okay. Were steps taken to see if there were any type of time cards that would show when Mr. Brink would have become... Jack, can you remember that movie, What's Love Got to Do With It? <clears throat> And you remember that scene when um, Ike turned, no, Tina, I guess she first met Ike and he was they was going to go on their first date. 
and <clears throat> and I came over to the house and he drove over and he ran over the flowers or something like that. And then the mother, um, Tina's mother, was it her mother or her aunt? I can't really remember. The mother, yeah, he razzled dousled her, not knowing he was giving out Tiger up with this. Yeah, well, it didn't start yet. They just started dating. But it was amazing because the mother was, you remember she was complaining. And she was like, oh, who's this guy running over my father? And then as soon as he, I walked in there and pulled out that money. And then she shut up and put it. I think she put it inside her bra. I was like, it's okay. See what I'm saying? Money, then, give it to me now. Sold her daughter out. Sold her daughter out. And then you remember the other scene when she finally left Ike and took the kids and run over to mama's house. And what did mama do? Called up Ike. Oh, they over here. And then he came over and got the kids. Mm -hmm. That's what that remind me of. And that happens so often, ladies and gentlemen, in homes. You got mothers and fathers. They will sell their children. I've done plenty of stories of mothers who in debt with their drug dealer. And they'll sell off their daughter, if you know what I'm talking about. Sickos. All y'all need to be thrown under the jail. Matter of fact, y'all should be put in a special planet and just, just, just. Oh, what about know. just hanging them or something? Yeah, they they do need to or, be hanged. Or just put get them in off. a put them in a, like a you know like they they burn the witches and stuff on a stake or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Can't stand them. All right, we oh we passed three hours. Oh, we gonna have to end this one here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh let me finish this off with just a little bit more because I want to put a, a link in here for tomorrow for something. All right, watch the rest here. Began his shift on um, uh, the morning of July 10th. I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, and do they have time records for Mr. Brink? I don't recall right off the top of my head, no. But those steps were taken? Yes, they were. Thank you. In your conversations with Mr. Brink, at any point in time, did he ever describe for you seeing a dent anywhere on the vehicle? No, he did not. I have no further questions of this witness, Your Honor. Now with minutes, yes. And <clears throat> how many search warrants do you uh, estimate you've gotten for this case or overall? Overall, um, hundreds. It's very important when you write a search warrant affidavit that it be very accurate, right? Correct. And that's because you want the, the judge who signs the search warrant to have the most accurate information because you are uh, asking to uh, search someone's residence or person or vehicle, something like that, correct? Correct. And also because you, when you sign that application for search warrant, you're doing so under oath, right? Correct. What's that mean to you? It means that everything is verified as true and correct. Okay. Now in State's Exhibit 150-1, uh, you testified to this with Ms. Cunningham, uh, but you included information about um, Beth Thorpe and her identifying the smell of bleach, right? Correct. Um, she came to you with that information? Yes, she did. Who else came to you with information about the smell of bleach? I believe it was only Beth. Only Beth? Yes. No one else? I don't believe so, no. Now, do you re have you reviewed uh, the search warrant that is 150-1 in the record? Yes. Okay, so you would have reviewed where um, you wrote, when detectives, plural, Open the trunk, they plural could smell what they plural believed to be bleach, right? Correct. So that's not accurate. I don't know how many detectives were down there at the time. I know that Beth Tharp is the one that came and told me what she smelled. Right. She put in the search warrant affidavit that more than one detective opened the trunk and they, more than one detective, could smell bleach when they, more than one detective, opened the trunk, right? That is what I wrote, yes. And that's not true, is it? I, I don't know how many detectives were down there at the time of the search, so I made a general statement detectives in Bay because there was more than just the detective down there. There's also the crime scene tech. You don't think that's misleading at all? No, I do not. You didn't write in there, for instance, when Detective Tharp opened the trunk, she smelled bleach. No, I did not. Okay. Now, Mr. Brink, uh, you are aware that he initially 
thought this vehicle to be a Malibu, right? In his initial statement, he said he thought it was a Malibu, but was for sure it was an Impala. Okay, when, when you interviewed him, right? That's correct. Are you aware that in his sworn deposition, he went back and said it was a Malibu? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, when you interviewed Mr. Brink, uh, we're clear on a couple things. He hasn't varied his story on the fact that this black man was wearing a dark shirt, right? Correct. And the video surveillance you showed him from the quick shot with Mr. Dinkins, Mr. Dinkins was wearing a white shirt, correct? Correct. And you've been involved with all steps of this investigation from July 10th, correct? Correct. Remind me of any evidence that we have collected, whether it be video or witness statements, that Mr. Dinkins was wearing a dark shirt on July 10th. I don't recall that we do. And Mr. Brink was also very clear that when he pulled this black gentleman out of the ditch, that this black gentleman was wearing white shoes, right? Correct. And the photograph you showed Mr. Brink of Mr. Dinkins coming out of the quick shop at 3.38 a.m., Mr. Dinkins is wearing gold shoes, right? That's correct. And Mr. Brink said, I don't recognize those shoes, right? Correct. And so those are two factors which are inconsistent with uh, Mr. Brink's story. We can agree on that. Sure. Okay. Um, Mr. Brink also said this car's interior was leather, didn't he? He did, yes. This car's interior is in fact fabric, right? Correct. And there's been some discussion about Mr. Brink's cell phone pinging off towers in that area on July 10th. We can agree on that. Yes. Right? But Mr. Brink drives this area every day, right? I believe so, yes. So we wouldn't be surprised to see a cell phone pinging off a tower that day, would we? Correct. Uh, you reviewed Mr. Brink's cell phone records? I don't remember if I did or if another one of the detectives did. Are you aware that his cell phone pings off towers there pretty much every day of the work week? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to object. Um, that is a mischaracterization of the record. The phone was evaluated for activity on July 10th. Can you question back, please? Could you just rephrase, please? Are you aware that that cell phone pinged off towers in the area every other day of the work week? No. Was it checked to see if it pinged off the cell phone towers in the area every other day of the work week? I believe our search was only a shortened search for that location data. For one day? No, I believe it was three days. Okay. Did it ping off those towers in the same area during those three days? I don't have direct knowledge of what it was on those other two days. So you're telling me that the Davenport Police Department did not want to collect evidence to see if Jared Brink cell phone would ping off those towers in dates other than the three-day window around July 10th. Is that your testimony? We were trying to corroborate the story pertaining to July 10th of 2020. Okay. Jared Brink told you that the time of year was uh, a time of year where it was colder, 45 or 50 degrees, right? That's correct. And you didn't want to corroborate that time, that part of the story by cell phone towers, perhaps see if he was out there in, let's say, October. At that time, no, we did not. How about since that time? Have you taken steps to corroborate that? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end here. We've been here for like three hours or so. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, everybody, for engaging. Um, oh, even hold, there was something else I wanted to do. So sorry. Okay. Um, I put the, I pinned the link. So if anybody want to watch the interrogation, feel free. The link is right there. So hit that so you can watch the interrogation. Also at the end of the interrogation, I have the body cam to learn some more. Now, tomorrow the goal is, tomorrow we probably have the verdict again. I don't know. We don't know what this judge is going to do. It's not the jury. It's the judge that's making the decision, correct? So I'm assuming it's going to be tomorrow, but I can be completely wrong. But if it is tomorrow, I will do something in the evening time around the same time I did today of the verdict. And then also, um, I will show the other um, in investigation um, interview that they had with the son. Now, that interview with the son, that was just after she was missing. So we're going to watch that tomorrow. Okay? So either way, I'm going to do something tomorrow. It'll be tomorrow evening. So around about like between 6.30 and 7, I'll start. Something like that. Depends. 
or 715. I don't know, but just stay tuned and look for the alert. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you'll know and you won't miss it. And afterwards, after this live stream, if you like, feel free to um, leave some feedback, share your thoughts. And I appreciate everybody who's been engaging and sharing their thoughts and everything. I'm sorry if I didn't get to you. I'm sorry if I didn't greet you. It's nothing personal. I just didn't catch you, but I'm thankful that you're here. I appreciate it. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a moment of silence. Yes. A moment of silence for this beautiful little angel. Yes. And also, you know, and prayers to her brother that he gets therapy and the oldest, the oldest brother, too. You know, she had another brother, another half brother, the oldest one, her big brother. Prayers for them that they get therapy because this this should have never happened. This this little girl here was not protected. And she was not put first. And this is horrible. And this is why we stress in my channel and always say is, ladies and gentlemen, you have to date smart and not thirsty. Be careful who you choose to lay down with and who you want to bring into your life and especially around your children. When you have children, your children are supposed to come first. You're not supposed to let these ham hocks, these dustettes, these trifling women come first in your life. That's horrible. If you don't want to put your children first, well then fine, just don't have children. Just don't have them. Okay? You're doing your kid a favor, just don't have them. All right, so now let's have a moment of silence for this beautiful one. And thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you for engaging. And stay tuned for some more of Donna Just Be Real. And check out the pinned comment and check out the interrogation. Moment of silence. <laughs> 